No, it's okay. I'd like to call a meeting um, of the Board of Selectmen to order, and I'll begin tonight's meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is our December 4th open session minutes um, as written in, in our packet. Um, any comment from my colleagues? Or do I hear a motion to accept? Chair, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from our December 4th meeting as written. Motion, motion made by Selectman Valancourt. Seconded. Seconded by Selectman Nobley. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Minutes pass. Um, the next item under communications and announcements, um, we're actually joined this evening by Rick Gorman, our director of our youth center, um, who is uh, coming to accept a donation or explain, elaborate on a donation received by the women's club um, awarded to the youth center. So, Rick. You know, if Ron Berry wants to explain. Okay. Um, I'll come join you over there. And I actually I think I have a few members of the club who might like to come up with me. Um, yes, I've come to the microphone speaking as the president of the North Hanover Women's Club, and we are really delighted. We had a great fashion show. We, one of our members is over here, Dick Valancourt. It's a great success, and we raised $3,000 that we are giving to the North Andover Youth Center to um, give uh, monies in the form of gift certificates for food and other things for needy families in the town of North Andover. So it was a lot of hard work, and I'm really proud of my committee. And again, if you'd like to stand, those who made it, just uh, and, uh, Thank you. If you'd like to come up so that... So just, uh, we did on Friday, we did a Christmas delivery around town, part of our North Andover, taking care of North Andover. We serviced 108 families this year, 257 kids uh, were taken care of on Friday, and we're actually taking care of some emergency situations this week. Uh, six more families, uh, fire victim family, and a couple other issues that went on at the middle school with some families that came in late. Uh, so we'll be taking care of them. Uh, the donation from the Women's Club was very well accepted us. It allowed us to actually purchase uh, food, gift certificates, as well as some presents for some of the families to kind of put us over the top on that. So besides just providing uh, presents this year, we're actually able to provide Christmas dinner for 30 families out of this donation. So couldn't have done it with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Just one more thing. I don't think it's too late to still make contributions. Um, it's getting close, but and I know that the fire department was also taking toys. I don't know if that stopped. So for anybody else who wants to contribute to this, to the great people of North Andover who are struggling right now, uh, that would be great. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items under communications and announcements from the town or selectmen? I do have one, a little bit unusual. Um, I'm here um, to let the, the people of North Andover that we recently lost two great citizens. Um, uh, some of you might not know this, but we lost one of our very dear friends, uh, Martha Salisbury. And anybody who knew Martha, she was a tireless worker behind the scenes. Um, was um, once I, she was our registrar. She's very involved in. She was very involved in the festival committee, uh, the garden club, and a list too great to mention. But um, she's also was also the wife of our former moderator Charlie Salisbury. But she's one of the people that's always working behind the scenes, so we can enjoy 
some of our festivities in town and just loved our town and loved the community. So it was a great loss. And along with her, a week ago, we lost um, Dick Kulpinski, same type of person, on the Finance Committee for years, um, literally planted all the plants for the Garden Club, uh, tirelessly working. And again, again, too many other things for me to mention, but two great lifelong citizens, and it's a um, great loss for the town, and I felt compelled to mention them this evening. So. Thank you. Their, their service, I mean, Martha served all the way up through this past election, um, helped oversee early voting, so she gave her time. That was her and dick over. It's a loss to our town. Yeah, thank you for saying that as well. Okay. That's I'm still running. From getting yeah, on. That's, and it's heavy news. Any other communications or announcements? Hearing none, we... Um, we can jump right into an acceptance of a donation from the Joseph N. Herman Youth Center, Inc. to the Youth and Rec Services Department. Um, we received an 11, or we've been presented with an $11,400 check to be used for youth center scholarships. Um, is there someone here to speak to that donation? I see Mr. Keneally approaching the podium. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Keneally, how are you? Uh, Rick Gorman and uh, Rick Green. Rick is the vice president of our youth center board. Um, first of all, I just want to um, thank the town for such a great partnership with the Joseph Herman uh, Nonprofit Board. Uh, we work together very well, and um, we're proud to present this to the town to make sure that the youth center is accessible for all families in our town. Uh, we work very hard to raise funds through one annual event and also an annual campaign each year uh, to support families in need as well as um, any other needs uh, for the youth center in terms of equipment or facilities and that sort of thing. So uh, we're proud to present this to the town and uh, thank you so much for your support and collaboration in this effort. Just uh, on the auction that the uh, Joseph and Herman Inc. holds every year, uh, one of the live auction items is the last one we do. I get to go up and I explain how many kids are on scholarship at the youth center. And since we opened in 2000, the goal was to never turn a kid away with the inability to pay. And we've been able to do that for 17 years. Uh, so an auction item, you're allowed to uh, sponsor a child. And we tell them exactly last year was 83 kids on scholarship. And every year we have raised more than the kids that we need. So last year was about 92 kids, I think, um, that were on scholarship. And it's an annual thing. People look forward to it. Some of the people who can't bid on the high items definitely walk away with that uh, sponsoring their kids. So it's a win-win. No kid is turned away. And we actually have been able to recruit the money that, that would be for scholarship. So couldn't do it without this great group of committee that's about 15 and 17 people that are on the committee that basically raise money to assist us in, in keeping the operation going. So again, thank you to Frank and Rick and the entire committee. Thank you, gentlemen. And so do, in order- Would you like your picture taken by Selectman Valancourt? Yeah. <laughs> we do need to make a motion, though, to accept the money. It's great that you're offering it. And I'm so th moved, <laughs> so moved. made by Selectman Smedili. Do I hear a second? second? Seconded by Selectman Keene. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Um, thank you, gentlemen, for yeah, always supporting great. this program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for giving it. Anytime. Um, next item on the agenda is we have um, several appointments being presented by our appointment subcommittee, and I will hand the floor over to the two of you folks. You know, it, uh, it seems like a broken record, but it, again, um, meeting after meeting, uh, when Regina and I get to really have the opportunity to meet folks in our town and it's just been amazing the energy the expertise and real desire to support the town coming from folks who say we want to get involved folks that have been in town a relatively short period of time a long uh, or a long time and it's just really exciting to say to them you know what there's an opportunity for you to connect and get and get engaged so um, we're just thrilled uh, we're, we're we're building a bench, though, uh, so we have to come up with uh, with other opportunities for people to be engaged. But I ask people, please step up. We'll find a place for you to help your community and help our town. So I'd ask that uh, uh, Regina. Is there anything else you want to add? No, that's great. All right. I thank everyone for their for their interest yes. in coming out. We have certainly had no uh, shortage of volunteers, which is awesome and wonderful, and it's been great yeah. to meet all these folks. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, we would like to make a recommendation or remove that uh, the Board of Selectmen appoint 
Edward Wang to the Cultural Council, Ashley Gulab to the Festival Committee, and Anthony Solis to the Emergency Management Committee. Motion made by Selectman Keene. Seconded. Seconded by Selectman Nobley. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Congratulations, um, yeah. Selectman Valancourt. Okay, well, I'd just like to take this channel and just looking around this room, there are so many past volunteers to the town, present volunteers, and hopefully some future volunteers sitting over there. Um, really, the volunteers of the town are the lifeblood of this town that really make it a great place to live, work, and play, and, and learn. So we really appreciate the volunteers to the town, and, and, and especially the new volunteers as well. So thank you all. Okay. Um, I'm going to exercise my right as chair and move the capital improvement plan to a little farther down the agenda. I'm just seeing a larger audience here, and I'm sure a lot of you are here for the capital improvement plan, but um, I feel as a courtesy we'll, we'll try to address some of the, the more pressing or at least relevant issues to this audience um, at a quicker pace. So the next item on the agenda following that is a request of Stephen Foster, our facilities director, to waive the building permit fee for masonry repairs at the North Andover Middle School and anybody who drives down 125 would not disagree that that's a need. I'm assuming this is a common practice. We work on public property rather than have us apply for a building permit, pay the building permit with taxpayer fees, and then <laughs> use taxpayer uh, dollars to actually pay for the project. We uh, request that the board waive those fees. We'll be doing that shortly also with the kindergarten project, but this has been common practice that when the town is doing the work, we apply for a building permit, then we request the, the board of and waive the fee associated with that. Because well, it just goes in and in and out. Okay. I'll move the, the Board of Selectmen to approve the request of the Facilities Director Stephen Foster to waive all permit fees for masonry repairs at the middle school. Motion made by Selectman Keene. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Selectman Spadili. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, Steve. Um, next item on the agenda is a request to surplus Vehicles from the police department. Mr. Manager, if you have more information. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Vehicle 301 is a 2012 Dodge Charger. It has 105,000 miles on it. We're in the process of replacing that vehicle with another frontline vehicle, and we'll be trading in uh, the current vehicle 301. Any questions for the town manager? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion made by Selectman Nobly. Do I hear a second? Uh, Point of, point of information, does the motion need to include the VIN number, or is it acceptable? Okay. Um, motion made by Selectman Nobley. Second. Seconded by Selectman Keene. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That is set. So the next item on our agenda is a discussion regarding a special town meeting. And uh, for the sake of the folks at home, this item was placed on the agenda following an opinion um, I guess you could almost say an informal opinion rendered by the Attorney General's office regarding the need to have um, protections in place for communities with a moratorium. We placed this item on the agenda because we felt that we might need to rush as a municipality, or not rush, but um, be quicker than we initially anticipated um, to pass a general bylaw regarding mm -hmm. marijuana. And so though that was the in initial intent of tonight's meeting um, earlier this evening, or I suppose earlier this afternoon, um, a group of residents submitted a petition with over 600 valid signatures requesting that the town hold a special town meeting. Um, this request from residents is um, something that we are compelled to honor. So I know there's a large audience this evening, but whether or not we have a town meeting isn't actually any longer up for debate, um, given that it is a request of our residents. Um, and so I know that not only do we have a request from um, this, this group, but my understanding is there is an individual here this evening just to speak briefly to the board to explain what the special um, town meeting request entails. Um, and then we as a board have 45 days from today to have that meeting scheduled, which means not that we have to meet to schedule it, but that we actually have to have it on the schedule. Um, and so uh, my understanding is that Mr. Johnson is here this evening. If you wouldn't mind just approaching and just briefly explain um, what this citizen's petition, again, that we are compelled to honor, um, is. Like yes, <laughs> legally <laughs> compelled. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Phil. Um, yeah, actually, the number we submitted was 750, and we're very proud of that. Uh, they all haven't been vetted yet, which has to go on, and several of them. Mr. Johnson, can you interrupt for long enough just to give me name, ad name and address for the Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Sox Johnston. Um, I live at 35 Kachichua Drive, Campion, Campion Hall. 
and I'm on, I'm on the advisory board of the Massachusetts Innovation Board. Here, here. So what, could you tell us? You cannot hear me. Could you no, tell no. us what the, but, the advisory board is? Is, is it a volunteer group? No, consultants no. Or? no, it's consultants that have been brought in with various expertises. If you remember from my previous appearances, my, my background is in the medical device industry at Smith and Nephew and a few others, and my my job among others is to help with the innovation center. They were what they were going to do. So uh, may I ask again? So are you a paid consultant? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think it's helpful to know that for right. the public. I've been asked that several times. So. Okay. Thank you. I think I've said that every time. I think so, perhaps. Right. But. Um, so we've submitted this petition, and that has met with some mixed feeling. And we wanted to explain very briefly why we did this, and why and why we think it was necessary in this time frame. Um, as you know, uh, the state laws are going to be open for on the, the uh, 1st of April, from April 1 to 15th, and if you can get your application in then, you are prioritized under subsection B of section 56 of the state law. The reason that that's important is that currently we understand there's roughly 142 applications already sitting at the state level. So there is a large amount of people that want to be examined. To meet that April date, we simply can't wait till the annual town meeting in May. So the state calendar is a little different than the town calendar in terms of time. So prior to that April 1 date, 30 days prior to that, we must submit to the Department of Health a valid application which they vetted for, do we own the property, is it our lease, do we have the zoning in place from the planning board, um, and is there non-opposition from the selectmen. Prior to that, we have to submit that the warrants that we passed at our town meeting have been vetted by the Attorney General's office. That puts you back to February 1st. And that's so why we file this petition 45 days would have you scheduling the town meeting at the very end of January, which would fit that schedule. I might add that we did not file the bylaw because we're meeting tomorrow night with the town planning board to work it out with them. They have a very large, as you know, bylaw that we're in virtual agreement to every item of it except, except one clause that we're working on. So that's why we did this. Um, a lot of people have asked to come. They're here. Um, I have two other gentlemen who would like to say briefly comments. Um, Is that okay? So you've not actually said what the language of the petition is well the bylaw the bylaw is what is what we're drafting tomorrow night that's the language that's the language that's what we're going to be presenting and that's being vetted right now you just, you Mr. Said, Johnson, there's a citizen petition filed today with the town clerk's office it had very specific language could you just for the benefit of the board and the I don't have that in front of me I'm sorry um, Michael do you have it Excuse me, yeah. Mr. Johnson has the floor. Mr. Johnson asked for that comment. You had said that you, I, I, with all due respect, Mr. Johnson, you had specifically, or rather a representative of your group had said that you were going to come and speak briefly about the petition. So. Would you, would you like me to read it? Yes, if you wouldn't mind. We, the undersigned registered voters of the town of North Andover, hereby petition the Board of Selectmen, pursuant to MLGC 39, Section 10, respectfully request to call a special town meeting and to include but not limit in the warrant for said meeting the following article. Citizens petition authorization of the town manager and the board of selectmen to negotiate and execute a host community agreement with Valley Green Grow Inc. doing business as Massachusetts Innovation Works and or its affiliates and entities as the operator of a registered marijuana dispensary and any other allowed marijuana use the operator at the property located at, at map 34 Parcel 17, commonly referred to as 16 Osgood Street, North Andover, the property, to see if the town will vote to authorize the town manager and the board of selectmen to negotiate and execute a host agreement, uh, agreement with the operator upon such time as the town manager and board of selectmen shall deem to be in the best interest of the town, which shall include but not, but not limited to payment by the operator of annual fees of approximately 
three three and a half million dollars covering items such as personal property taxes host community fees and other community related expenses all in the consideration of 1.1 million square feet of permitted and construction cultivation space Two, formation of a community and or specific revenue fund to administer grants to North Andover an organization to be funded by the operator with the initial grant of 250,000 and a continuing annual 1% of gross cannabis related revenue up to $1 million per year in annual annum contributions. A term of 10 years and four to take such other actions as be necessary to implement and administer such agreement or take any other action relative thereto. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Virginia. Um, and so again, this is, is that something, clear? This is absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So this is again something that we as a board are legally and for the folks at home and the folks in the audience, we are legally compelled to have this town meeting. Again, you, you submitted more, more than enough signatures to compel us to do this. Um, so there's really not a debate about, and I, I don't know if there's no, a- No, I, I feel uh, I this do is, appreciate that. And, I, and you certainly don't want to debate us not doing this, is why you're standing here, but right. more for the audience and the folks at home that this isn't so much a discussion about if, it's a discussion of when. Um, and again, the 45-day the right. window is pretty clear legally, so- um, But I do I hope that you understand the logic of why we precipitated the action. That was the purpose of my earlier comment. I understand, I just, uh, for the folks because at home, I mean this is- people have asked me, why are you doing it now? Why don't you wait till, the, till, till May? Okay. And, and, and of course, I obviously, that, there are hundreds right. of people that, that want this to happen. Yes. So um, I just wanted to make sure that it was right again for the folks at home because this is not included in our agenda. And so oh, there sorry. is an item on our agenda that's, okay. that talks about a special town meeting. Do you but want the to read the money itself, again? <laughs> sorry. I think that I anybody with that. social media can, can read okay. that. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? So as you say, we are, we are compelled to do this by a citizen's petition. Um, but the part that's a little bit confusing, we already have the authority to do a host community agreement. Um, that's our role as the executive board. But, we do. Um, so it's a little perplexing that we're having a special town meeting for something that we already have the authority to do as the executive board. Um, um, just to point out that to have a, a valid application, we need zoning. Right, which is not in that? place yet which we need the town meeting to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. But it's the planning board's it's not as simple ready as, It's as simple as that. Right. Is it fair to say that this petition is being filed so that there will be a special town meeting called with the expectation that there will be a zoning article at some yes. point in the future? Yes, and that's why, it's, and that's why it, we, we waited to meet with the town planning vote to get the wording straight because we're virtually there, but not quite. And we want to see if we can are be. Are you speaking for the planning board or yourself, sir? Say it again? That you say you're virtually there. Are you speaking for the planning board or yourself, sir? I'm speaking for the document that we have in front of us and how, how much of it we disagree, how much there's a difference of opinion on. That's all. It's one paragraph on a 15-page or 16-page document. And the planning board has stated that you're all there except for this paragraph? They haven't stated anything. Okay, this is what they exactly, presented to you. us as their my document. My point exactly. No, no, my point is this is what they presented to us for consideration. Could it be helpful, yeah. Mr. if I just go over timeline a little bit for the benefit of yes. the whole discussion? So, so under Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 10, um, it is correct that with more than 200 signatures, 200 uh, certified signatures or more, the selectmen are compelled to hold a special town meeting. Uh, which includes the language which would have been filed at the time of the petition that provides the segment 45 days to hold the town meeting not to notice it but to actually hold the town meeting that 45 day clock begins today um, under the rules of special town meetings in terms of notice requirements the segment also must provide a minimum of 14 days notice to the residents of the community that a special town meeting is coming in the form of a warrant and so the clock begins today, uh, December 18th, correct? Um, that means the last day a town meeting could be held is February 1st. Practically speaking, February 1st is uh, not a common uh, day of the week that we would normally hold a special town meeting, so the board must decide uh, within the 45-day window, but no um, less than 14 days from that date uh, when a special town meeting would be held. Um, a fairly quick, fairly quick look at the calendar would suggests that uh, January 30th would be the time, the date which is most commonly practiced here for town meetings and provide the most notice and time for the board to complete its work uh, for that date. 
So within that's your that recommendation. Days, My recommendation is January 30th. Yeah. Within that 45 days, is that also um, what is the what would be the deadline? Would it be the 14 days prior that the warrant articles would be in place, or what would be yes. the? Yes, you yeah. need to have a warrant. Which you need to have a warrant publicly posted within 14 days, no less than 14 days from whatever date you establish. That's some of the difficulty if we if you uh, folks were to shorten that timeline away from the February 1st date, which is 45 days. The closer you get back to this date, the less time you have to complete a warrant and get it posted. And that's why I would recommend a January 30th date to give both the public more notice time and you folks more time. Mm -hmm. Then, Therefore, by the 16th, if you work back the 14 days, uh, by the 16th, we need to have a duly posted um, town meeting warrant. Uh, you have a next scheduled meeting on January 8th. So we would have a follow-up conversation to this as to some expectations for my staff relative to what would be required by that January 8th date. It should also be um, uh, communicated that within the same statutory reference, if now that there is a special town meeting that will be held, uh, citizen petitions to that uh, warrant can be added with 100 certified signatures. In fact, we already have a filed citizen petition, mm -hmm. which will be triggered by this citizen petition, and that was the one uh, filed a couple of weeks ago that had two articles on it. One was to ban all five commercial categories of mar marijuana. And that also included a zoning bylaw um, uh, that was tied to that same concept. That will now be triggered and be required to be included in any warrant that you approve. That's not optional since it met the 100 signature petition requirement. Mm -hmm. Does that help or make things yeah. worse? It does. So if we were to um, open the warrant at, at some point on the, our meeting on the 8th, for example, if the planning board has completed their zoning bylaw in their meeting t tomorrow, yes, um, and then had a public meeting um, to get input in early January, it's conceivable that the, pl the, the zoning bylaw would be ready to be on this warrant. It could be added to the warrant so, uh, for a January 30th meeting. All zoning bylaws also require public hearings, at least one public hearing under the statute. Um, given that there's already a zoning bylaw that will be on the warrant, that one compelled by the 100 signature mm -hmm. petition filed a couple of weeks ago, the planning board will already need to schedule and post a public hearing for that bylaw. Uh, the question would be of timing. Uh, give the proper 14-day notice requirement for a public hearing on a zoning bylaw and still meet the requirement of meeting the Gen January 30th date relative to holding a special town meeting. So it's possible, but as you can see, the entire timeline is um, very tight and there's a lot of moving parts to that. So if they were using your example, if they approved it and then instructed the uh, town planner to begin the public hearing process, they could meet the 14 day requirement to get through public hearing in order to get on the warrant. And so it would be at our next meeting whether or not we as board members want to vote favorable or unfavorable or no action on any of these. Yeah, that's sort of another um, issue. So I would, I would suggest, so I, I will assume, although at some point I would uh, suggest you certainly vote that, I'll assume the January 30th date is the most logical, but the board will need to vote on that this evening. Um, okay. I would then begin tomorrow uh, starting to quickly craft a town meeting warrant, which would include at a minimum um, the petition language, which Mr. Johnson uh, just read and also include the other petition that was previously filed. Uh, I will have questions as to you tonight as to whether other items will be added, like your previous decision to vote on the ban of two different categories. I, under, I understand on, on three categories there was there was difference of opinion, but there was majority opinion on uh, two of the items, uh, the cult, uh, the cult, the cult, the cult, sorry, the craft cultivation um, and the retail. And so I would need some direction on whether those would also be included in the warrant. So tonight is really going to become what um, it's giving me, uh, providing me some direction, my staff some direction as to what would be included on the warrant. Because on January 8th, you're going to need to open that warrant, review it, close the warrant uh, once you're satisfied that it meets those requirements. So that, because otherwise we're not going to make the, the deadlines we've established. Uh, you will have to decide on the, at the 8th meeting whether or not you choose to report at town meeting, vote favorably, unfavorably, or may not make any report. Um, that's another decision that I would probably, I definitely would leave for the 8th because you'll need to know what's on the warrant before you make the decision on those articles. So just to be clear, Mr. Johnson, Johnson said that they require a zoning bylaw in order to proceed with their plan as they 
as they envision and as they want, as they've described. Um, if the planning board does not submit a zoning bylaw and have a public hearing prior to, so that we can choose to put it on the warrant, the planning board or us, I guess, choose to put it on the warrant on the 8th, presumably they have the option of collecting more signatures and adding that. I think I would fully expect how? that if planning board does not complete a process tomorrow, right, wrong, or indifferent, mm -hmm. and I think Mr. Johnson can respond to this, I would expect, since he's just identified the need for a zoning article, right. there's going to be a zoning article, a map article, and other articles that are to follow that would require 100 signatures right. since okay. we now are holding a special town meeting and met the <clears throat> 200 signature requirements. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, better, a question better answered for Mr. Johnson. Yeah, let me, let me answer that. So you're, you're, you're right, Regina. We, we paused. We have, we, we have drafted one already, okay. which has everything in it except that one paragraph that, that we, um, we think is, is unnecessary given the other conditions that are outlined in eight other pages. Um, but we're trying to see if we can work that out tomorrow night. Truly, okay. I think that's you know we well, should do that. Yes, yes. You know, because exactly. if, if you submit that and the planning board does not agree with that, with that re removed paragraph, then we're we're in, we're not any further along because no, we to no to what the manager is telling you. We have a draft that we will get two hundred or two hundred signatures, Dick, and then we will submit that. And we will submit and, that. and then the planning board has to vote on that whether they right. are, are favorable or unfavorable. Right. And if right. they're unfavorable. I believe because they voted unfavorable in March of last, uh, May of last year, sorry, then there's, there's issues they with could, that, right? They, they could state their position again like they yeah. did at the last meeting. That's true. Although we, ha we have to have some bylaw. I mean, it is legal, mm -hmm. so we would have to have some zoning bylaw. I guess they could state they're unfavorable <clears throat> to what the citizens have proposed but then they would make a recommendation of their own. Yeah, I think, Dick, the other, the other thing that's going to happen. I think they wait to the regular town meeting. They, exactly. Yeah. Because right. the moratorium that we have in place right. that was approved last year goes all the way till next November. Dick, the other, the other thing, and um, I've talked to John Simon about this, mm -hmm. is that we, the, the board hasn't really polled itself on these issues. It's been individuals and their individual comments. So I encourage John to sort of to poll the commission and see what, and see what they collectively feel. And he, uh, he said he will try and do that tomorrow night. Um, the other thing that, 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 the, that the town manager talked about, there will be a series of public hearings on these, on these bylaws, and the public is going to state their position on this thing, and the planning board could change its mind, too, based on that, on that public input as well. And we're hoping that that, you know, they're, they're very anxious to do that, and I think they should, to seek a further input. Does these, do, do these restrictions make sense, or are other parts of it uh, good or bad? We don't know. So it will probably be changed somewhere in during the month of January. And by you setting the, the date that the, man, the town manager su suggested, and this is what John and I talked about, they can start their public hearings as soon as they want, on their own, just on the bylaw, just on the bylaw. Well, whether it's filed by the planning board or, or filed through citizen petition to the special town meeting, there's still a public hearing. Right. So there's going to be a public hearing on the citizen petition that was the one filed a couple of weeks ago. And whether it's the planning board tomorrow through uh, affirming the need to proceed and, and move down the public hearing path, or whether or not it's the next day or the next week when this group comes forward with a zoning article, a, spe a public hearing is required in either case. It doesn't matter who files, a, a public okay. hearing would be required. Right. <laughs> okay. It'll be there <laughs> from one of us. And the so idea they're, they're compelled to schedule a public hearing yes. if a citizen puts a zoning article. Yes. Right. Right. That's what I thought the question was, right? Yeah, they compelled in either case. I think and that's important for the public yeah. to know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why the 30th date is relevant, because other than moving it later in that week, which is just an unusual date for us to proceed, mm -hmm. uh, the planning board and others will, will need that time, quite frankly, to yes. do things like public Absolutely. hearings. And, and again, I think we've all said that this process should not be rushed, so they need adequate time to hold that public hearing and not just rush it to a, yeah. quick, a quick date just to have it done. So. Yeah. But we also feel we also feel that a whole month of multiple hearings would be good. So we're, and that's, we're all and in that's what on this that. and that's and that's what and that's what we think this this action and these dates that you laid out you know allow truly. Well, I think we're all in agreement that we good. should have lots of public input in hearings. Good. Yes. Okay. So I can recommend. Can I recommend that the board uh, make a motion and vote relative to setting the date of the special town meeting? 
I move that we set the date for um, January, Tuesday, January 30th, uh, 2018. Selectman Smedeli has made a motion for January 30th to be the scheduled date of our special town meeting. Do I hear a second? Can I just amend that long enough to make sure it's sure. in a friendly amendment? No, that's fine. At, at a 7 p.m. time frame? Yeah. At a 7 p.m. Yeah. time frame. Select I second that motion. Uh, Selectman Smedeli's motion, seconded by Selectman Valancourt, at a 7 p.m. special town meeting for Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. Any discussion? Can I vote? Cannot. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We have a special town meeting scheduled for January 30th, 2018. <laughs> Now the hard work. Yes, now the hard work for us. Oh, you enjoy your night. Uh, um, right, well, <laughs> we're going to go out drink now. No, no. We um, have, uh, we have, I, uh, oh, you want one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the difficult work now is to get some direction from the board so that I can start crafting a, a town meeting warrant. Again, given the schedule, the likely a recommendation would be that that town meeting warrant appears uh, to get it done, get it to council, and get it before you folks on January 8th at your meeting. Um, um, if you wouldn't mind, just, just quietly file out if you're filing out. Um, and just point of reference, so for, for us, this board previously, um, three meetings ago voted, four meetings ago perhaps, voted unanimously to direct the town to submit a general bylaw that prohibits recreational and craft. So I think earlier we said majority, but it was a unanimous decision. Retail, excuse me, retail and craft. Um, with the majority vote not to take any action on the other three. Um, you said you would like to know whether or not we have any desire to place restrictions and what type of well, restrictions. I, I want, so although the board has voted to uh, take the position to draft the general bylaw for the banning of craft cultivation and retail, I would want to vote of the board that you want me to put it on the warrant, or at least I think direction would be enough. I, I want to make, since we're going to have sort of one shot of this, which is a little unusual based on our traditional experience. I'd get you a warrant, get feedback. I'll come back the next meeting, get some feedback. Mm -hmm. it's, you're gonna, I'm going to have uh, one good shot at this. Mm -hmm. And coming back at the 8th, we won't have a lot of time if for some reason we're off. So I just want to be clear. So my assumption at this point is that there would be a general bylaw that would deal with the banning of um, retail and craft. I would, yeah, I would, yes. I would yeah. give you that direction. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure I don't want to, go, yeah. right? I mean, because yeah. um, uh, deleting things is not so difficult. Amending things on the fly mm -hmm. at one meeting is a little more challenging, right? right? And so obviously the citizen petition that you heard this evening and the citizen petition that was previously filed, the two articles associated with that. Correct. Um, the, there was a, 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 a somewhat unanswered question as it related to the limits of yeah. other uses yeah. of of the five commercial categories of marijuana that related to, so if you remember the conversation, it went something like, do you want to prohibit or limit? And there was a decision made to prohibit um, the first by majority vote, the, the, those two that I identified. Uh, at that point, there was no direction as to any limits placed on the ones that were not being prohibited. So um, would you like me to uh, craft bylaws that identify limits, or do you want me to just move forward with the the bylaw that relates to the uh, prohibitions? Are you asking us to give you these answers right now? You're going to have to because on January 8th we're going to need a warrant, and you've got. And in the end, if it, if I don't have any language, and you get to January 8th, and there's a decision to be made on January 8th, then. Uh, it's a little bit like sausage making. Uh, make, making bylaws on the fly is not a good way to do it. So I can, so I, I guess one would be a conversation about whether or not those, do you want any limits on those three remaining categories? You want zoning to carry the limits? Because there'll be, if there's going to be zoning, will zoning carry the discussion of limits? That's one perspective. Do you, do you have an interest as selectmen to have bylaws which manage those limits? Do you want me to, you want me to do any work to this at all? Or, um, so I need some I direction. I thought when we took that vote three or four meetings ago that no direction was no direction. We were, okay. we were going to leave those. Right. This was just my opinion. This is what my understanding was. Yep. And that we had voted on the other two to, limp, to prohibit right. them. And then we had taken no action on the other three. And that was kind of a direction for no direction. Okay. 
Well, I'll take the direction for no direction is assuming I will not draft any bylaws associated with limiting the other three categories. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll come forward with a warrant which includes special town meeting uh, requirements under the citizen petitions and draft bylaws for a ban on uh, retail and um, craft cultivation, right? Or craft, whatever it is. I think right. that's acceptable because then at that point zoning governs it. At that point, whatever would be in zoning would be what would, would govern any limitations, yes. Yep. Any other direction, any other things you, you uh, may want on the warrant? I know it's an open-ended question, but it again, sure uh, and it's awfully rushed at this point. Well, are we going to have? There'll be an opportunity for other citizens' petitions, obviously, right? It's an open town meeting, so it's there's going to be. We're now on January eighth. One hundred signatures get you on more. Right. So, we we may not have anything, but there could be other things coming in from other sources. Is that are yes. you saying like Hopefully not that you that you know of some? No, oh, I don't. Okay. I'm just saying okay. there, there just could saying. be other sources. Well, no, not. Uh, other than what's already been submitted. Right. I guess I would also echo what uh, Selectman Valancourt said. I mean, we've spent um, numerous meetings since this fall talking about this topic, talking about it conceptually, talking about it practically. Uh, I think we've weighed in fairly, um, in a very transparent way, which, again, um, I think people can go back, look at the, look at the tape. It's all recorded. Um, and I'm appreciative of this process, and I, I like the way we're trying to work hand in hand with the other board and with this with this timing. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that you know where we are with this going forward. Let's go. Okay. Um, with that, that, that resolves the town meeting discussion on the agenda. Um, that's Chairman, it. Unless there's opposition, I plan on attending the planning board uh, meeting tomorrow night uh, long enough to explain timeline and timeline only. Here's what started, here's what the board has decided, <coughs> here's what the time frame looks like. Yes, that, I have no problem with that as chairman. Um, I think that the planning board would find it helpful based on their prior meetings where they've, I think, sought guidance and, and, and picked us from the audience if we've been in attendance. So I think that they'd welcome that, um, especially with today's development. So thank you. Um, I'm now going to go back a little bit earlier this evening. Um, on the agenda, we had the town manager's recommended FY 2019 to FY 2023 capital improvement plan. You might want to pause for a minute or two. Phil. Yeah, it's okay. Phil. I thought some breathing down my neck. I, th I thought it was Tom Reagan, though, so I wasn't sure who it was. At the front of the <laughs> Be careful. It was Susie. I thought it was Susie Reagan. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with A good couple. Yeah. Um, So, so out of respect, actually, and, and I, I apologize again, this is kind of sausage making for folks in the audience and at home, but um, not to re recycle that term, but we do have some businesses before us this evening, and just out of respect for their own time as well, where they're under licensing. Um, <coughs> we're just considering whether or not we want to potentially. Well, I, let's, let's go into licensing. I, I would certainly, uh, as chairman, be willing to actually, again, put on hold the town manager's report for the capital oh, improvement yeah. plan, and uh, instead, um, hear from the board if they're so inclined that they'd like to move into licensing, we could at least address the concern of our, or the issues impacting several of our local businesses. Um, if my board would so indulge me, I uh, to motion to move into licensing. Move, move to, move, uh, to open the meeting for licensing. I'll second that. Motion made by Selectman Nobly, seconded by Selectman um, Smidili. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? On licensing. Okay, so we are now in licensing. Um, first on the agenda for licensing is a public hearing um, for Rolf's Restaurant, uh, well, North End Restaurant, Inc., DBA is Rolf's Restaurant, 
um, for an incident on November 22nd, 2017. Um, we have a slight issue because we do not have the police officer who wrote the report here this evening. Um, and in, under normal procedures, we would open a hearing up and we would uh, have that police officer uh, report on that evening's uh, um, events. And then we would give uh, the, um, uh, the board an opportunity to ask questions to that police officer as well as the, um, the business owner to present their, um, their um, account of the events and also ask questions. Unfortunately, we don't have a police officer. The police, reporting police officer um, is not able to be here tonight. So I am going to um, suggest that we table this uh, until our January 8th meeting, um, at which time we will ensure that the police officer is, can be here prior to um, scheduling or making sure that the police officer is here in conjunction with the scheduling. Um, so for the public hearing, um, do we need a motion to table that? Um, we, we would need a motion yes. to table. I, I move to table the, the public hearing until we can have all parties present. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to table that to our January 8th meeting. Um, next on the agenda, we have renewals of two licensees. Um, uh, once again, um, we have a license and, and a renewal for Rolf's North End Restaurant. This is Rolf's. It has nothing to do with the previous hearing. Um, this was a license renewal that we, we put on, uh, we tabled last time. Um, so <clears throat> uh, for this evening, um, the, um, the issues that were, um, were um, present at the last meeting have been resolved and um, they are in compliance with all licensing requirements at this point. So I would hear a motion to uh, grant Rolf's um, both their entertainment and liquor, liquor license and I believe food license. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, we have a, um, a renewal for a license for Smolak Farms. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this one was um, tabled because there was a submission by a neighbor that was rather lengthy that the board had not had a chance to review at the time. And um, I'm hoping that everyone had a chance to, to read that now. And um, I would like to, I guess, uh, at this point, um, we could open it up to public comment and um, because there were, were a significant number of um, issues that were listed on that report. Um, should, I think, should we read that into the record or it is published as, as public record, right? It's a rather long um, letter. Probably just identify anybody who may be here to speak on behalf of it. Yeah, so I would um, ask if there's anybody here to speak on behalf of that, okay? Sir, if you could come up and identify who yourself and your address, that would be helpful. Oh, you can sit if you'd like. You can sit at the table or at the podium, whichever you prefer. Good evening, Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Attorney Russell Chen, and I'm here representing uh, Sherry Smolak, along with her husband, and also, uh, as noted in my letter of November 15th, Amy and Francis Birmingham, uh, Poppy and Carl uh, Wighard, and Anne Marie uh, Brightman, all residents on Dale Street in North Andover, uh, concerning our um, opposition to the approval of the entertainment license. Uh, as I've indicated in my letter, which I believe the board has now had a chance to read, this isn't a question of asking that the board deny the entertainment license outright, but it's re really a question of trying to balance the reasonable use of Small Act Farms property for this entertainment license and the rights of the neighbors uh, that are directly affected by the current location of the tent and its use. Um, as the board may know, an entertainment license had been issued a number of years ago uh, for the tent. And since that time, there's been a number of issues concerning uh, the use of that tent. Uh, the board has, on a number of occasions, set forth guidelines and, tr and tried to implement restrictions uh, to basically uh, alleviate some of the problems, some of those 
uh, restrictions were to put up some sound barriers on two sides of the tent, also to put a governor on the sound system. The problem that we see is that when this license was first issued, it was a tent that may have been used for sp sporadic um, events. Um, this tent now is up eight months out of the year. There's events that happen during the week, and there are weddings and other galas and other events on the weekends, housing upwards of 200 to 250 people. And as a result of this expanded use of the, of the property and the location of the tent, which sits approximately 65 feet from um, Ms. Smolak's property, and I have photographs, which I did not include in my submission, but it's 65 feet without any, inter without any barriers between the tent and their backyard. All that's there is basically a small little detention pond, so the tr sound travels quite easily over that, over that area. That because of this expanded use, it's our position that uh, there needs to be some either additional restrictions as to the use of the tent in its lo current location. And more importantly, our feelings are is that there's 120 acres of land up in that area. That currently there's a bond there right now that is used for similar events. There is also a tent on agricultural land that has been used for similar events. That if we need to weigh the rights of my clients as well as the neighbors and, the, and, and their inability to use this property during this eight month time period, that there really is a better location uh, for allowing small act farms to operate its, its events. And um, that's what our position is and that's what we're hoping that the board will take into consideration. And if I may add to that, it's, it's become a problem that we can't open up our windows. We can't sit out on our deck and have company. We can, I mean, we cannot enjoy our yard. And, and it's a problem. And, you know, they say that the shutdown down time is supposed to be 9 o'clock during the week. Well, they, there is noise being made until the earliest is 11.30 at night, and it's gone on until 1.30 in the morning. It's people cleaning up, scraping dishes. You know how that carries, and it's over a body of water, and it just comes in. You know, they're talking. It's, I can hear full conversations. So it's, it's created quite the problem for us, and we're up at 4 a.m. in the morning, and it comes very early to us. So, I mean, if, if, let me just ask you this, would you like to have these events in your backyard if you lived at our, at our residence? And that's really what it is. It's no different than, again, I have put in my notes, it's really no different than living on a residential street and having a neighbor put up a tent for what you would assume to be a graduation party, which is not a problem. That tent staying up there and then realizing that these people are hosting events three times a week, eight months out of the year. And just, just a point of information. Miss Smolak yes. is against Mr. Smolak at Smolak Farms. Just assume that's not a coincidence that there's a relation. But it's not. An, but it's, it has no. It doesn't just, matter if her last name is Smith or. No, Jones. I just was asking for for just yes. understanding. Yes. So that these are separate yes. properties. You're not the it's farm owner. Separate properties. Yes. Yeah. No, we're not farm owners. No. Okay. No. Um, we have tried to resolve this with Michael Smolak for years. And we always thought that he would try to help us, and yet he hasn't. The neighbors back in 2014 got so upset because the noise carries. I mean, I'll walk down the street to judge what the noise levels are. I go from different spots in the neighborhood. And, and it's like, you know, they can't open up their windows either. They have small children. And yet Mr. Smolak is, you know, Okay, he tried to do something with a, a partial sound curtain, but unless you encase a whole building in a sound curtain, it's, and even that's not going to work because one little crack, that sound comes out. It isn't just music. It's the volume of people. You have 200 to 250 people having a great time, clapping, cheering, singing, you know, yahoo, you know, I mean, you've never gone to a quiet wedding, have you? Or a quiet event? So, so this is what comes across to us. 
And one of the things I put in my report is, is I tried to outline, in fact, on a number of occasions, they've, they've gone out and they've been able to uh, have the sound level read as well as the statute concerning uh, what would be considered a reasonable sound level. And, and I know at one point sound barriers were put on two sides, but again, it leaves two sides still open. And, and it just hasn't worked, as and my client has indicated. And more trees have been taken down um, because they finally put, they, they decided to put pavers uh, in this tent area. And now finally it's within um, the wetlands guidelines for the past, I don't know how many years, it was illegal there with the, with the wetlands. So finally now it's, you know, within the guidelines, put pavers down. And because of that, they raised up the, the flooring, okay, with putting in all this fill, and they took down numerous trees. So now it sits higher over a body of water, and that sound just carries and carries right down because it comes in to us and our neighbors. Not, and I'm not sure it was not part of the submission, but I, if the board wants to get an idea of the proximity, I do have two photographs that may provide you some sure. help, if you don't mind. <clears throat> that's the tent, and as you can see, there's the body of water. That's their and usually, there's no sides on that tent. Usually, it's totally open. It's it just 65. Yeah, that's the same body of water, right? Correct. That's what I want you to see. And that body of water, it was solely put there for irrigation, and also too, along with the tent. At this point, is. Uh, we have a rainbow fountain that is a light show. And then as they clean up, we have four halogen lights that face our house. And that's, those are on until midnight or so. And all our windows, our whole living area is in that back, unfortunately. If it could be in the front, it might be different, but it's not. Okay, well, thank you. Um, can I ask if any of the other folks who signed this letter, or not, uh, actually, the letter was not signed, but were named in the letter, are here tonight? No. They're not? Okay. Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the board? No, again, at the end of the day, again, our, our goal is not to limit somebody's ability to use their property to, earn, you know, have an entertainment license, but again, it's a question of balancing the, the, the needs and the reasonable uses of, of somebody's right to use their property with, with the needs and expectations and the rights of the taxpaying citizens of North Andover to be able to reasonably use their property. And, and frankly, under these circumstances, we feel that setting up a tent 65 feet from not only my client's property, but other also neighbors on Dale Street um, was not the best location, uh, especially with the continued growth of this business. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Small like I see you're here tonight. I, did you want to address some of these concerns? You can you can you can sit if you're more comfortable or or stand however you wanna Chair. Chair? I'm behind you. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Thank we're, you. We're a friendly bunch. <laughs> <laughs> you don't bite. Not yet, anyway. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for having me here and to be able to speak to this issue. Um, over the years, I have tried to be a good neighbor and to listen to the neighbors and to be sensitive to the neighborhood. At the same time, I've tried to make the farm that I've been in charge of for now 45 years, a viable business. Sadly, the issue at hand comes down to one of a personal nature. The people bringing the complaint, my brother Steve and his wife, unfortunately have a personal vendetta. In the past, I have spoken to other neighbors whose names are included in the complaint letter and have worked to address any concerns they have had. When I've spoken to them, they have told me they are, they've been happy with the farm and what it does there. And if there have been issues that we had to address, I've addressed them with them. And um, I've also told them at any point in time, 
if you have a problem, please come to me and talk to me about it. And, and I, I sit here waiting for them to come to me and talk to me about, about it. One of the, uh, one of the people listed uh, the last conversation with the Birminghams I had on Dale Street was about their dead hemlocks that have been sitting there for two years and they're embarrassed by it. I said I'd bring them to Northeast Nursery, get them my discount so they could replace them. Um, when I ran into Carl Wigert a couple of years ago, after I had put these sound mitigation uh, features into place, he thanked me profusely, saying thank you so much, it's made a huge difference. And again, when I've talked to them, I've said, if you have a problem, please let me know. Um, I also spoke to Anne Marie Brightman. She lives across Dale Street in what was my sister Eileen's house. And um, asked her if, because I poll the neighbors, I, I talk to them when I see them, ask her if she had any problem with what we're doing there, and she said no. And honestly, 200, 250 people coming to visit, uh, I think it's a little, bit, a little bit generous. Sometimes I wish there were that many, but we make up for, for the thousands and thousands and thousands we accommodate you know, on the weekends in the fall. I met with my brother Steve three times to discuss the situation. And after many ideas, the only one that came back that they came back to was to move the whole facility to another part of the farm. In, in this case, my brother and his wife chose to go directly to the town rather than to continue to try to resolve their concerns. Um, they are, in essence, using the town of North Andover as a weapon against me and the farm for their own personal reasons. I will not go into any detail about why I think they're doing this and interfering with the farm's business relationships. And in other ways, there's no reason to drag the town or this board into this. Suffice it, suffice it to say, they were once very involved in farm functions and once we changed that for valid business reasons, the complaints began. So I can't help but assume that there is some sort of connection. It is further important to note that they were integrally involved in the construction and the location of the function offices, bridal suite, bathrooms, pond, and tent. So it is hard to fathom why are they complaining now. In fact, it was at my brother's request that the pond was sited where it is instead of to the left of its current location. I wanted it to be farther to the left, thereby leaving all that wetland brush as mitigation to, 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 to buffer things. The pond was dug as both an irrigation pond, not a retention pond, uh, for my blueberries, and also corollary to that it was used as a backdrop to my function area. In the past several years, I have rec recommended sound, I've I've implemented and placed sound mitigation devices such as sound curtains and directed, sp and, and directed speakers which control the, the, the sound that, so that does not arrive, arise above a specified DEP level. This was at the result of a very extensive professional sound study done by Tachi Associates, one of the best firms uh, in New England. And during this study, Greg Tachi talked to the neighbors about the situation there. Um, I can give you copies of a letter. I uh, had him uh, take a look at some proposals that I will list now uh, and have him give me his opinion about these. And it'll be obvious in just a minute. In the letter, Greg Tachi, um, uh, I sent Greg Tachi a bunch of proposals of things that I thought might go to help alleviate this situation. With all this aside, I am committed to do the following measures. Place an additional 20 feet of sound mitigation curtains on the side facing the pond 
uh, for a total of 40 feet, which would provide the abutters an additional uh, level of protection. So that entire side of the pond and view would go. So, it would, so the fence is for, I mean, the the, uh, the tent is 40 feet. So you it would be the, the, the entire end. Okay. Yeah. In addition to that, what I would do at the same time is extend the side, which which points to the north, more towards the farm stand, an additional 20 feet. So, what was what was 20 feet by 20 feet would become 40 feet by 40 feet. The the, um, the other things that I would do is I would uh, I would create positions of banquet managers. I know some of you in business have seen what, how difficult it is to get people in to do the job correctly for yourself, and uh, we're no different at Small Black Farms than anybody else. But um, I would create two positions of banquet managers to control the um, wrap-up of the evening as, and then for that matter, the entire function of the, uh, from the beginning to end. So somebody would be on site empowered to make sure that, uh, that things don't happen that shouldn't happen. Um, they also would involve establish a series of protocols that would include the following. No music being played during breakdown. Lights directed away from the neighborhood. Um, uh, breakdown being done within the tent and sound mitigation curtains. Control over staff by present banquet managers to minimize talking and other associated no noises. Tachi Associates, the sound study consultants, would review the sound at various times during the season, but would begin with the opening events. ProSound, the equipment vendor, would calibrate the equipment as they have in the past to make sure that it was within the prescribed sound limits and directed away from the neighborhood. These speakers were specifically designed and constructed to go in this space so that the, that the sound waves would project away from the neighborhood. We'd like to think that all these measures would demonstrate our sensitivity to the neighborhood. Furthermore, I'd like to clarify the idea that I can pick this tent up and move it to any other area of the farm. I went through the process because we are an APR Ag Preserve restricted farm to get a special permit. I think that some of the selectmen were here when I went through that, when, when I went through the process. It's a process that you have to do to go through in order to be allowed to do things that aren't, aren't traditional agriculture but accessory to what you're doing. Um, the purpose of this is to allow these um, types of activities so they do not impact prime important and, and important land. One of the things cited in the, um, in the uh, submission before was the tent being down near the pond. Well, I was in touch with the APR board because I think they got some calls and I responded to them saying it was a temporary thing because it was a delay in getting the, the pavers down because of the wet spring. But um, I spoke to the assistant commissioner, Jason Wentworth, and the Eastern Mass APR ALPC uh, administrator, Delia DeLongchamp, about this. They both stated since I was granted the permit, which is due for renewal in, in 2019, that things have gotten not easier, but much more restrictive. And they said there's very little chance, although they can't say there's no chance, they said there's very little chance of, of any kind of permit being a grant to move move at any place. Okay, yeah. Would there be a cost? I mean, what would prevent you from going ahead and submitting that and asking? You know, you said there's very little chance, but there is a chance, right? Is it what would be what would prevent you from submitting their request to well, see we, well, if that would be granted? Well, first of all, the first of all, the the uh, license isn't up until 2019. Okay. Um, uh, could I do it? Yeah, but they already told me it wouldn't happen. If I may address that, Frank DeLuna, um, if you if, if you're on an APR, and what's your farm, role, Mr. DeLuna? What's your role? Um, I'm counsel to the farm. Counsel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the um, in the APR program, it was designed to protect prime agricultural soils, and if you take a look at this farm, the reason why the department said this knoll is appropriate is because it's not prime agricultural soil. The rest of the farm is either prime agricultural soil or a wet soil, which would not be compatible to the uh, use of a tent. 
Well, what I guess I'm picking up on is you said that they said there there was a slim chance, so there would there might be a chance, but they didn't rule out they, and say they, no. They, they, they basically they said no, but they can't say no. Okay. The other question I have sure. with the sound, uh, and I'll let you continue in a minute. But the sure. sound barriers, I guess that would be on the north wall that's facing the neighborhood. Right. Why wouldn't you go all the way to the end? I mean, I asked you that, and I, I guess I understood that you said you were going all the way to the end, but now I understand that it's only on the short side, not the long side. The well, the, 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 the short side, uh, when, when, um, when we came and we reoriented the tent, it moved further away from the, uh, the wetland. There's a, there's a slim uh, sliver that is within the bordered vegetative wetland there, and we went through conservation. And the reason why it's up higher is because conservation required us to do all these things. That's not the question I was asking. Oh, the, the, the oh barrier, yeah. The sound barrier. Why wouldn't you extend it for the full length of, of the, I guess what you're calling the north wall of the tent? Yeah. Why wouldn't you, I mean, because that seems to have, um, you know, projection into the neighborhood. Why wouldn't you complete that? Uh, if, if, if it would make a difference, I would. I would. And I, I, I take uh, the, uh, the sound consultant's suggestions from that. Has, um, have they suggested that or, or spoken no, to them? Mm -mm, no, no. I'll ask them, though. Okay. I mean, I can't imagine that it wouldn't make a difference. It's a sound curtain, and that's an open tent to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not to the immediate neighbors that are here tonight, but to other neighbors, I would assume that's... Yeah, the, I, the other neighbors seem... I haven't heard anything from them at well, all. There's four of them assigned this talk. No, 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 no. They're, they're no, directly on the other side. So they would be next to, to next to my brother's house. Okay. Is is there a reason why you wouldn't want to just put them on as a way to preempt any type of complaints? No, no. I'm, you know, if if it's going to cure the problem, I'm more than happy to do it. Well, we don't know that it's going to cure the problem, but it certainly might mitigate an, a future problem, sure. or at least prevent a future problem. Mm -hmm. um, the other question I have is from the pictures, and I can't tell directly the the grades. But it looks like um, your brother's house is higher or, or sits on higher ground than the tent, right? So is there any way that there can be mitigation? Uh, because obviously the, 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 the roof of the tent is just canvas, right, or, or, or vinyl. Mm -hmm. Is there any mitigation that can be done up there as well to try to it? Or? I'll ask the sound consultant about it. I'm not that I'm aware of, but certainly it's worth the question. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, I've, 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 well, I was pretty much finished with my with my with with my statements, but I also um, have pl uh, the the trees that 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 we had to take down were required to be taken down to move the tent site by the conscom, so that's why they came down and they were not on the pond side; they were away from the pond side towards the farm, so it had no impact uh, in terms of in terms of sound going in that direction. But do, does anybody have any other other questions or comments uh, and, for myself and, or my council? And I know one of our previous conditions was that the any um, DJs that you use use your own muted or, or at least oh. governed um, sound system, and, and that I know one time we had that that didn't happen. But the, yeah, one time they sure, snuck something in. Yeah. Yeah, we need to ensure that that is always happening because that's mm -hmm. uh, you know that was a key condition to the sure well i think the banquet manager would be the the this uh, this group and uh, you know i don't want to rehash things but this group that was in there came in attached themselves to it and during their break in their set they carried stuff in and, and changed it unbeknownst to me as soon as i heard it i was down there threatening to throw them out i recall that so the banquet manager would they actually just be supervising or will they be serving and running around and that or will they just be there as management I'd say I'd say they're more management but certainly I mean all of us on the farm have got to do I everything <laughs> so, no, so, at, at any yeah. event any type of business sometimes the manager needs to step in I do get that sure um, but their main priority is just to manage and observe and make sure the rules are being followed sure absolutely Are, are there a lot of trees? From the pictures, it didn't look like there were really hardly any trees between the mm. tent and the neighborhood. But maybe I oh uh, between that there's the, a fair number of trees there. There's a whole swamp between the tent and yes. the neighborhood, except for that pond, which I didn't want to be there to begin with. Yeah. There's a whole what, a swamp. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all well. Excuse me, wetlands. Wetlands. Yeah. 
And is there high growth in there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 it's full, it's, it's very dense. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we don't have in our, our packet a list of police complaints. There was one police complaint over the past year regarding the use mm -hmm. of the of an iPod, right? Or that, that, that was uh, that happened uh, when uh, with with that group but that, that snuck something in. Is that I don't know if you have that handy. Is that the only police? So I, I, I specifically recall prior to joining this board that there, there was were a lot of another issues one during a, a cleanup session, I believe, with that went, when one of the women did is that went late, and I think that's one of the things you're saying that the um, banquet manager would be managing in sure. the, uh, the cleanup crew that mm -hmm. in sure. one instance went well beyond midnight or one o'clock, and that was a weeknight, mm -hmm. playing loud music as they were cleaning mm -hmm. up the event. I mean, that's something that we need to ensure. I mean, I'm. I, I believe people have a right to quiet enjoyment of their property, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if, if people, especially late at night, if we have there on a weeknight when people have to work in the morning, I think that's very disruptive, mm -hmm. um, and you know, that needs to be really stopped. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, I don't know. I know you know people like to have music when they're working and such, but uh, in an open field well, in a neighborhood, they mm -hmm. can't have it. They right. can't do it. They're going to have to. Know, wear earplugs mm -hmm. or wear earphones. Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I, I agree with you, Dick. I really do. Any other questions from the board? Um, any thoughts on direction? Uh, we're going to do so. Before us, tonight be... is, before us tonight is a petition for um, both the common picture license and the entertainment license, um, which um, is up for renewal. And um, is there anything that the, any actions that the board would like to see, or any follow-up uh, well, information? I think is um, this Mr. Smolek said that he was willing to talk to the sound people, um, and I think mm -hmm. we've had success with that in the past, at sure. least in part. I know we, I know you feel differently, um, but I think we, I think they deserve the right to see if they can correct the situation. Um, so. Yeah, thank you. necessarily it is the volume of people having a good time and like let's take for example during the weeknight dinners people are sitting there there's no music they're sitting there they're conversing they're drinking they're having fun they stay sometimes they don't leave until 11 p.m. we hear these noises okay it's not just even the kids cleaning up it's the sound of dishes clanging together. And now you have about 600 of them because there's four courses of meals. Um, there is always a manager there at night because um, the farm manager in one of the police reports, it states that, you know, um, that she was uh, the event coordinator in the tent told, um, said that they had the music on while they were cleaning up, this was that incident, and that they turned the music off and that they had said, oh, we figured that we'd get a call. They knew that it was loud, you know? It's just, it's, I don't know how else to phrase this. If you could come and sit out on our deck and just try to, you know, like four people just try to have a conversation, and this is with no music going on, and we can't, we can't sit out there because you're talking about 200 and 250 people. They've had this tent at other locations in the process of when they were doing this new location with the pavers, the tent was out in the field for six weeks. People loved it. They just want to be on the farm. They have another tent set up in the fall for a couple of months and that they run a bunch of things out of. People enjoy it. Does it necessarily have to be right in our backyard with absolutely no barrier. We can't do a wall. We can't, you can't grow trees fast enough. There's no forest. It's just a body of water. There's, there's no growth there at all. But, Ms. Willard, did you get a chance to see this? I don't know if you guys did. No, so we did not. If you'd like to take a look at this. So what they're suggesting, okay, Mr. Smollett, okay, you're going to scrub it. They're suggesting is to um, 
to, in, to extend the sound barrier to the in full side of the tent that would be facing your property. So I can understand what you're saying. Sure, when this was just open canvas, yeah, I'm sure a lot of noise traveled through that. Mm -hmm. But if they're willing to um, extend that noise curtain to the full length of the tent, I would think that would prevent the barrier, or at least a sound, somewhat of a barrier for that conversational um, noise that you're hearing, as well as the suggesting over here that they would extend it over here. So they're really, you know, doubling the amount of sound curtains they have. So I guess I would ask you, did you notice a difference when they installed the first set of sound curtains? They did not. Probably because you're in the direct line with we that with that open we are in the direct line. <coughs> with that open with this open section of the tent. But if Correct. he would, if they were to increase it there and maybe suggest we put some here instead of, you know, if this full length is not necessary, but if you go on the south wall of the tent mm -hmm. and make a little U shape so that you've got um, almost like a cup down there that's mm -hmm. gonna hold in the sound, that might um, prevent, I'm not a sound expert, maybe you want to talk to your, uh, your mm -hmm. folks there, that might yeah. prevent that noise, uh, that, that conversational yeah. noise to, from... Can you address that in, in, that, in that letter that, that I gave you? This letter that you just yeah, that ain't, that ain't, ready, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. cover, but cover. also, too, is that when you're doing something like this, the noise still escapes in any open area. So, therefore, that noise is still going to come out over here, and then you have water. And how it sits, it's low, we're high, then it comes through. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm suggesting this this yeah, barrier I, here as well, so that, and, and I haven't read the letter yet, so I don't know what their recommendations yeah. are. But I think, you know, you if, all that if that would somewhat dampen that conversational noise, it might be helpful um, to the you know, to the property owners over here that I have to deal with that. I mean, I, I, you know. I think that, you know, maybe if the whole tent was encased in a sound curtain, and their end time was specifically their end time. Nine well, that was going to be my next it, comment. You know, done, gone. No, no yeah. noise. I, I think that would be my next comment. Um, you know, taking aside the, the full um, noise dampening around the tent, but I think mm -hmm. you know your license is until nine o'clock on a weeknight, and that's when we would expect the, the events to, to stop. Um, not lingering conversation, mm -hmm. not you know uh, anything else. I mean, I understand the cleanup, but that's going to have to be done in, in, in really try to be quieter with that and make sure your your staff knows no open mm -hmm. no, no loud music. But I think more so than that is the comp is the event ends at nine o'clock. It has to end at nine o'clock. So you have to give folks a uh, you know a warning or, or not a warning, but a, an advisory that it's going to end at nine o'clock and they need to be on their way. Um, I mean, we have to be considerate of, of neighbors. It's a 9 mm -hmm. o'clock on a weeknight. I think that's late enough. Folks have to work in the morning. I mean, if it's consistent um, throughout the town, I would say yes. Um, you know, we're all, you've all got venues in different parts of town, and, uh, you know, I just want to be treated the same as everybody else. With we, the, no, with it's, it's, it's your license. It doesn't mean consistency. This is what you're granted on your license. Okay. So other, other venues have other licenses, um, you know. And yes, mm -hmm. I would expect, and I don't know, you know, we, that when a place closes for business, it's closed, and that's when people mm -hmm. leave. I know, you know, I've been in establishments before when all the house lights go up, and you know, they say, you know, you can't stay here. So mm -hmm. um, we need to have that same courtesy. And but you need to be more sensitive to it because you're in a neighborhood and you're in an open field with an open tent for the most part, and you need to be more sensitive to that. You're not sitting down on High Street somewhere where you've got no residents around you or somewhere else. You're in an open field with an open, and we've all, you know, most of us have been camping. And you know, when you have one family out there camping that's talking late at night, no matter how low they're talking, everyone can hear them. So the sound carries. Um, so we have to, you know, we have to be more diligent in how you um, treat your, uh, your your licenses, you know, and how what the, the times that you end your, your events. You have to be diligent. Mm -hmm. um, open it up to the board. <clears throat> I think I'd like to see how the sound barriers work. Um, I, that's how I, I think, feel. And I think that that I think, seems I like think a that, day, I think that I, I truly do think that um, these guys are in the business. This is their business, and they're independent, and um, and and they're professional, and and they are independent, and they will give me their honest opinion. Well, it, it all comes out of if you had a veil of ignorance and. 
You both sw swapped places. Basically, you didn't know what side you were advocating or had the vested interest in. What resolution here would make the most sense? If you didn't really know whether you were the neighbors or you owned the farm and vice versa. I think what we're talking about here is if you didn't know what your vested interest in, are the things we're talking about reasonable? Would you accept that not knowing what your interest is in? Would you? If you didn't know if you were the, the farm owner or the neighbor, mm -hmm. is what we're talking about what, what Selectman Valencourt has proposed here, would that be reasonable to each of you? Well, that's a good point, um, and that's a good question. Would it be reasonable to expect quiet in my neighborhood? Sure. But I also kind of think that, the, that what I proposed with, with the uh, sound consultant's backup should take care of it, at least from my conversation with him. Yeah, the it, only it, caveat with this, though, is that our WIM dinner series runs until 9.30 on a Wednesday. So, yeah. No, no, our so entertainment I'm not, license. So, the, so I, yeah. I, I, you know, I agree with you with the with sound barriers, and sure. I see that you're working to extend those. Right. My, la my latest comment was around the time. Your mm -hmm. license is until 9, 9 p.m. That's what your license has been. Mm -hmm. So 9.30 is, is beyond what your license You, If you're allowing uh, continued entertainment beyond 9 o'clock, you're, you're violating your license. That's what your license has been. I mean, this isn't, hasn't changed in years as I can remember. Mm -hmm. So my, my comment was you need to honor your license um, and, and, you know, stay within the town times stated on your license. And that's the same for any business in this town. You talk about consistency. That's the same for any business, you know. Um, unless we give them a waiver when we do for one business on New Year's Eve, we allow them to stay open a little bit later, and we specifically address that every year. Mm -hmm. And other than that, every other business, you know, they honor, they have to honor their license. If they don't, they'll end up in front of us, mm -hmm. right, if we get complaints. Okay, any other comments from the board? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, uh, excuse me, if I, if I might, uh, uh, Attorney DeLuna just reminded me that the service does stop at 9 o'clock, and it's just the, the, the end result of, of, of things like, like any other business, people moving out. Okay. We need to expedite them on their way out. Believe me, the, the, the quicker they're out of there, the quicker I get to go to bed. So I'm happy to have them go, yeah, too. And, yeah. I've got a reminder, you also live on the farm, too. And so you get to you certainly hear the same noises. I do, and I get the knocks on the door and the phone calls. and the, mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, any other comments? You've been quiet tonight. <laughs> Okay. I think Michael's covered everything. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. so it works. Um, do we have a motion from the board at this point with respect to the uh, small act mm -hmm. um, common victual license and entertainment license? Move that board of selectmen act as, acting as licensing commissioners approve and renew uh, all licenses for small act farms. Are there any that. contingencies on that or any... any um, any addendums? Follow what? Okay. I, I guess I would suggest that we say that we're expecting, mm -hmm. based on the report, that the additional sound curtains would be mm -hmm. in place, and we'd like to get an update on that mm -hmm. um, in the probably, I mean, what would be a reasonable time to get those installed? Your, your um, first events start probably in Beginning May. Beginning of May. Mm -hmm. May. Sure. So I think we'd like to get an update on that mm -hmm. probably in the March, April time frame. Sure. I, I, um, I already I priced them, and so I've got quotes already for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask um, Laurie to put that uh, on a meeting agenda for the licensing so that we can get an update in uh, April time frame on the on the installation of the curtains mm -hmm. and um, I don't that as well. and what would be helpful would be um, the invoice the paid invoice and some pictures would be nice too because I haven't sure. seen what these curtains look like so mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay the motion to be to be amended and approved okay right great that's just for the meeting no here yeah just I, I just want an update Okay, um, so we have a motion, and a, do we have a second? I second it. A second, and the license times would be as listed in your in your um, in your license, which is 
um, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., except on Sundays preceding a Monday federal holiday in which you could extend till 10 p.m. Or by special permit. That's, that's on there, too. It's not on there, but I know in the past we've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was on there before. Yeah, it's not, so it's not called out specifically on the yeah. license. It's oh, okay. It has to yeah, be a request. Just, so. right. It would have to be a special request. Yeah, okay. it has to be a request. Right, so which we'd have to publish. Yeah. Publish. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Good. Didn't Thank mean you. to take up so much time, but appreciate it. Oh, it was, it was, it was from everyone, time. from the residents and from you. All. From you. Okay, that concludes our business and licensing. I'll have a motion to move out of licensing. Mr. Chairman, I move we move out of licensing. Second. S second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're back in our regular meeting. Um, so um, going back to our agenda, Mr. Manager, the final item on the agenda this evening um, is the capital improvement plan for FY19 to FY2023. Um, Mr. I, Chairman, I have the town manager's report. I figured I'd make the that presentation under the town manager's report that'll let you get to public comment. Public comment. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so we will again. This this is just we're, we want to keep punting the CIP. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so that being said, so I will um, I will table or I will push till later in the meeting um, under town manager's report that in line. And so um, we do have now um, next item on the agenda is just open public comment. And so again, for folks who have not attended before, so it's one person at the podium um, expressing their thoughts um, for an item that was not on the agenda or was on the agenda, um, and just understanding that um, deliberation is limited in this instance. So I know that we have some folks here and. I will let, you know, first come, first serve. You pull the microphone up, Mrs. Stewart. You're a tall man. There you go. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was on the board before when this thing with Smolak came up. Um, it's unfortunate that family feuds get involved with this, and what you're hearing is a lot of anger. Um, I did spend a lot of time at Small Lake Farms during some of these events from the people who were talking about them. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that loud, and it was done by 10 o'clock. I have more noise from the, than the high school bands at night at my house a mile away than they had up there. So it's unfortunate. I think he's doing the right thing as far as putting things in place. But uh, I, I actually spent a couple of times there. I had gone to some of their functions and actually been there. And I thought it was just a party. And so there's different views of how you hear things. I was hearing them different. But uh, that's one thing. On the other thing, you set the special town meeting. Did you, did you pick a place for it yet? Oh, I did not say the place in my motion. You're going to need the gym. Is your house available? Uh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to need the gym. 15 years ago, trash fees pulled 3,000 people. This is going to draw 1,847 people. So I know that the, mark the, that, mark the town moderator is. Really good at his numbers. Gonna, mark that down. That's, that's good insight, Mr. Stewart. It, 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 because it's past my bedtime, Merry Christmas, to everybody. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank Happy, you. Birthday. Um, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And so the town manager, I know, is uh, the town moderator. Um, has also brought that concern up about what happens in the event of, of an overcrowded uh, town meeting. Yeah, we have a process so. that it will actually be identified. Typically, it's listed in the warrant what the process holds, so it'll be identified as the high school auditorium, and then as a function of that, depending on an evaluation of what happens, how to deal with overflow is something that the moderator and town clerk and others work on to make sure they have the resources. Typically, we overflow into some empty rooms like the calf, but all those judgments happen a little bit on the fly. It happened at last town meeting when we had just a little over a thousand people, mm -hmm. and so there'll need to be a judgment, and we'll make sure we have all the resources necessary to make sure, regardless of what location you're placed in, you have the same access as those people that are in the auditorium. Great. Ms. Lauro, if you still wouldn't mind, I know you came last, last meeting, but um, your name and address. Yes. I, I am uh, Karen Loro, and I'm at 595 Massachusetts Avenue, and I'm uh, talking concerning um, the Mass Ave 125 um, Mass Dot project. And this uh, is being funded uh, 
by the federal government, um, supposedly for safety. And there is a component of the town, even though it's being funded by the, uh, the federal and it's being managed by the state, there are certain things that the town did give permission um, for. And our um, state representative, uh, Diana, um, I slaughter her back. Exactly. Okay, very good. Um, you know, she, she encouraged us to separate the town things away from the state things. And I, I know tomorrow it will be about the town, but today I, I gave a list of what our expectations are with the, the town. And we kind of like to um, go through them get some feedback on what is feasible. Um, so I will quickly read those in, um, even though everybody, I mean, uh, the, the um, um, Board of Selectmen have received them. I'll read them in quickly and make this quick. Um, what we expect from the town near term is to extend, and I, I must st state that all of these are um, more suggested um, the federal safe routes to schools stresses the importance of sidewalks, traffic calming, speed reduction improvements, uh, traffic education, and enforcement in the vicinities of schools to provide safe routes to school. So therefore, we want um, less traffic, slower, and more cautious driving. And that's what we're seeking here. Um, the current plan is uh, reduces uh, existing traffic calming measures, which ends up increasing speed and throughput of traffic, which this, the state indicated was a major component of this program, as, long, as, as with um, the ability, uh, Mass Ave was designed for two axle uh, vehicles, and um, two lanes are being added to uh, entering and exiting uh, Mass Ave to allow um, trucks up to five axles to make the turn. Right now, they just can't make the turn because it's too sharp. And um, so that's the purpose of the um, two of the lanes, the primary purpose of two of the lanes. So what we're asking is um, traffic calming is to extend the current Mass Ave Adams school zone to Mass Ave 125 intersection. That's one thing we're asking. We w wish the town would approve, but the state will pay for, and this is still feasible. We've already checked into it. It's, it is feasible for the state to do this. Approve a raised and marked school and pedestrian crosswalk where the existing one is, right adjacent to Adams, okay? And that's roughly three to five inches tall. It'll be about um, three, to four feet wide so that the kids can walk across it and it, it ends up having a very bold striping so that you can't um, avoid seeing it. Uh, it even has reflective, um, some kind of reflective material on there so even at night it kind of <laughs> warns you it's there. And um, because right now we're having problems with um, vehicles just racing right through the current crosswalk and endangering the kids and the crossing guard. That's been listed by a, a number of residents as being a major issue there. And um, then we wish that there is a stop sign at Adams near the uh, school crosswalk. And um, this is to um, protect the kids and there will be much greater um, uh, cross traffic with um, with blocking uh, the partial blocking of Autran, so any cross traffic that would have normally gone through Autran will now go at Adams doubling, um, and so um, we're also um, we wish the town would support the application for a residential heavy truck ban during hours of darkness. What's required is that you are a residential area. Um, it doesn't require the amount of trucks. We actually do have greater than 5% trucks going through. We've um, 
gave a very conservative estimate of 2,000 trucks going down um, past my house um, per month. It's probably closer to three, but I was trying to be ultra conservative so nobody could come back to me and said I was exaggerating. So um, everybody said I underestimated by a great deal. Um, then uh, rescind the town's permission for a new right turn lane um, from Mass Ave. Rescind the town's permission allowing the state to ignore resident zoning setback protection. Pre uh, prevent added truck traffic at Old Center uh, Roundabout by denying new 125 um, truck turn lane. And then later, um, you know, um, and that might be a year later or so, um, support the, the reclassification of Mass Ave um, from a minor, a minor ulterior, arterial road to a, a minor residential collector that it actually is. When you look at the number of driveways, you look at the um, number of cross streets, and you um, look at its length, it doesn't com connect multiple communities, and it has no industry. So it qualifies to be a minor um, a residential collector. If we say that it's actually an arterial road, then we have to put stop signs or lights at every cross street, because that is that is um, what happens on an arterial. So um, if you want to insist, if whoever wants to insist that it's an arterial, then we would start pushing for more and more stop signs, which is appropriate um, on an arterial. Um, but what's inappropriate in arterial is we have too many cross streets, so it makes it a res residential. Um, if I can, I sent you guys the plan that kind of shows how many driveways. So each of these little blocks in the map is um, is a property, and it shows the house and how far the homes are set back, and where the cross streets are. And it, I, um, until I actually sat down and counted it, it's probably on average, I thought it was about five driveways to every cross street. It's actually closer to three. So we just have an enormous number of cross streets um, there. So, um, you know, I, I think we should reclassify it according to the architecture of the roadways, but if we're not going to reclassify it, then we should properly protect all the um, cross streets. And I think that, that would end up being a ridiculous situation of every three houses having a stop sign or stoplight. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we I, should look. I agree. Good. Everybody knows how I feel about stop, Stoplight at every three houses? No, I don't. No. She said that's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous, but you either say that it's a collector, which its architecture is that of a collector, or you say it's an arterial, and you protect the cross streets as an arterial. So I'm saying that whatever it is, it needs to be consistent. And I think it would be a lot more costly to actually make it consistent with an arterial. Okay? okay. I, I'm done. Thank you. So for, and, and thank well, you. Um, I, I'm Ms. hoping that we can get some feedback on that. Um, you know, it's not appropriate for tomorrow, because this is specific to the town. And, um, you know, perhaps they're on the next selectmen's meeting um, or, you know, on the special meeting, maybe we get enough signatures that we can go on to that one also. Um, because I understand that other, even though we have nothing to do with the new facility that's being suggested, um, I understand a special meeting means that other groups can piggyback on. On the warrant is what you're saying. Right, right. Can I, can I just have a couple of, I want you to understand some of these. Do you have a couple of questions okay. I could ask? Yep, absolutely. Uh, in no particular order. Um, and let me just say, some of these items which you identify as the town still, I mean, in fact, almost all of them, with some exception, I'll identify that, still require the state's approval. Absolutely. Okay, they so that, I, just want to make I sure. You say things like oh, that's fine. Uh, I just, approve. Right. So I, I did state so, that. The, the state would be doing it, the town has to yeah. give its Let approval. Let me, if I can, just because I want to understand, so it's not just that. 
it's certain items like truck routes and identifying those and trying to walk away from those are not town decisions. They're town requests. In fact, we recently did one on Green Street. And we requested that. They asked for data and, and in turn said, no, you cannot do it in that neighborhood. So in some cases, although you've identified it as town, I just want to be clear that many things associated with um, um, the roadways that we're talking about would require state approval. Yes. What the job, as you're identifying as the town, would be a request. And that's what I state. Okay. I, do, I do state that, and I say later, after the road was reclassified, then we'd seek a 24-hour one. But for the um, at darkness one, only requires that we are residential. No, I understand. That's, that's just, all it requires. I just want to be clear, because this has got lost a little bit in the translation, and I don't want it to get lost. No, no. Oh, I, I, I tried I, to make it I, very specific. I'm sorry, can, I, can I just, because okay. I want to make sure, that's okay. all. Is some, still some of the things that you're asking for require state permission. So the board may ask. Now, there's some of the things that don't, and I, want, I just right. want to be clear. But some of the things that you, you will, we will, board may say yes in writing, truck route, after dock. That still requires submission to the state, and the state can deny it. I just want to be clear about Absolutely. it. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Anything? So, yes. Because yes. that's an important yes. distinction. You, the, right. Well, but I, Mr. the I, words I used was support the application. Well, I, right, I mean, not, I, I, I think I made it very clear that you, I didn't you, think you could make it happen. You, no, you, you did, Ms. Lord. So I, I are there any sure further clarifying clear. questions that yes. you have? Yes. So you've identified a stop sign at Adams. Is that on Adams or on Mass Ave? You identify it. I just want to be clear. I just I want to make sure I understand the list. There's two stop well, signs. Let's, no, let's, let's, uh, there was Ms. a question Laurel's about request. in your list. It said stop sign, and you identified Adams. Right. Where um, did you want that stop sign to be? The the stop sign would be on Mass Ave at Adams. On so Mass Ave. It would be Ave. stopping yes. traffic on Mass Ave. Oh. Right. Right. That, and that's not a town option either, yeah. to a certain extent. So, but that's Why fine. Is that? I just that's wanted town owned. I just wanted to understand. So that's, that's a stop sign Mr. Mr. Manager, no, Ms. Um, Mr. Manager, just what? to clarify, sort of as a follow-up to our prior meeting, um, we had discussed that we would have tomorrow night's meeting and then have Ms. Lauro and the residents back, with ideally with Mass DOT at a future selectman's meeting, ideally the next selectman's meeting. So I just don't want, I mean, there are opportunities for them to ask questions, and then I just, I feel like it's... We would be falling down the same path I think we fell down I last agree. meeting. I just want to make sure that as we go into tomorrow's meeting, I understood what is being suggested and that I just needed some clarification. so I completely agree. So the first, I should have stepped at the right spot. We don't, I don't view tomorrow's meeting as uh, it was identified as the town's meeting versus the state. Right. This is 100% the state project with some, uh, clearly some understanding we have some, in some cases, some influence and some not. Tomorrow's night's meeting will be presented by the state. Absolutely. Uh, we will be present. I'll make Absolutely. sure that it certainly will be present. But it's the state's meeting to get input. It's not because this is a state project. It is a state's meeting. So Right. These were identified as things that the town sure. could do, and they were worded to be within Understand. your domain. Yep. Um, and I wanted to get them out there. My Appreciate understanding that. was the, the meeting on January 8th, you be making decisions. And I wanted to make sure that our requests were in before I, prior so to you making decisions. I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I think that all of this moved not, not irresponsibly quickly, but quicker than I think we could have thought given the holiday. So we're lucky you, you came to our last meeting. Before tonight's meeting, we already had another meeting with the state scheduled. So I, I think actually we would be on track. And I think it would perhaps be irresponsible to not solicit your input given that so if I could just make push one this. final so, to this, then I'm going to leave it alone to the chairman's point. Um, as it relates to what the town did and didn't do, to be clear, the state came to us and had produced a design and looked at two different options as it relates to the right turn lane on, on Chickering from 125, heading toward the common. But they referred to it as 1A and 1B. Um, they indicated that there were two options. One they preferred, and that preferred option, and one they one they preferred from a traffic perspective and a, an accident reduction perspective, but they recognized that that option required more right-of-way involvement, impact on your property, as an example. They indicated there was a second option. It didn't, wasn't as good from an engineering perspective, less right-of-way involvement. At the time, they said, we're leaning away from impacting the right-of-way as much, although the traffic data seems to imply that the alternative, which does, may be better. 
What the town did was ask that they reconsider that and evaluate it further so we would understand what the impact was if they created that additional lane or not. And in turn, what they have said is that by making the head of, top of, Mass Ave Chickering facing toward the common, allowing for a left lane. There is already a right turn lane, people use it all the time, but it's widening the road wide enough so that the right turn lane remains, straight along remains, but now there's a left, is you've indicated from their data that there would be a 30% reduction in accidents. I've simply said this since that change from their first request, and I've done this myself, I've indicated to them that they have, if they have an interest to want to retain three lanes at the top of Mass Ave along your property, then that, that is theirs to decide. That it's not the town, simply what the town did was say, will you look at this and provide us with additional information as to whether or not how it impacts traffic versus right of way. Our position is, uh, is, is agnostic to that, no. meaning this. Well, I'm telling, I just communicated with them today about this. I know what I did a year ago. I want to be clear about what I did because I want to be very clear about it. At the time they approached us, they presented the two options. They asked if we would want them to reconsider the option which created three lanes. I said yes, because I wanted to understand the impact on accidents. They in turn have come back and said, we can either stay with two lanes, their proposal will be a straight ahead lane and a left, or we'll keep the right lane, go straight ahead and left. And they have provided data as it relates to the impact on accidents. I have said to them, that is your decision to make your decision to advocate for, and this is your project. And I communicated that very well, clearly to them. That, okay. okay, that is I not understand. what Larry I, Cash I understand, to but us. I want you to hear from me, okay. very clearly from me, what exactly happened. And if it's different tomorrow, I'm going to be there. So he can say it to me in front of the meeting. But I want you to be very clear about my perspective on that. That that is what I've communicated very directly to Mr. Cash and to his staff. So tomorrow night at the meeting, if he comes through and says something else, I will rise and say that is in fact not what's happened. But I have communicated that to the state myself. Okay. I just and with, to be aware. And with, with that, okay. I, again, because it's going to be clarified tomorrow night. This is one of the reasons why it wasn't on the agenda tonight, because we are meeting no, 24 hours from now. No, I think it's very important so, for, it to, for us to get um, across your what points, we F need from you um, prior to that meeting. I, you're absolutely right. Um, so for the folks at home, again, this has been something that we have robocalled, we have sent emails to the town, we've sent emails to the schools. Um, this is a meeting that's occurring at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, the 19th, which is tomorrow night, at the Senior Center located behind Town Hall. Again, this is the intersection of Mass Ave and Route um, 125. So, it's also been advertised as a public meeting, correct? Yeah. It has been because it's anticipated that the majority of the Board of Selectmen, if not all of us, will be in attendance well, as well. Who's so, who's advertised it? Um, yeah. So, um, that being said, so any additional comments, Ms. Laurel? No, no. Okay. I, I mean, we can Thank talk about uh, that lane tomorrow. Yes. Uh, that isn't what he made very clearly to yes. us in the last meeting. And, and as a result of your comments, I've made it very clear to him about what the town's perspective is. Okay. They have to decide if they want to advocate that on their own, and that is their decision to make. <coughs> but it's not a decision the town's, I, I explained, okay. I don't need to repeat it. Well, but the school zone yep. and, nope. and the That's the, I think at this point, yeah, I'm with Mr. You. Just you. Mr. Manager just and, um, and Ms. Laurel, I think that that's, I, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's discussion. Yep. So thank you, okay. and um, I appreciate that. So. I'm taking it that Ms. Seawade is in line. Um, I just also. want to um, back her comments. Um, we've and, heard and actually, Ms. Seawade. Okay, um, Stephanie Seawade, yep. 615 Mass Avenue, North End of a Mass. And I just want to make it clear for the record that we've spoken to two state officials. It was not only Mr. Cash, but it was Ms. DiZoglio that told us the plans are not final until the ground is broken. The lane can be removed, and the town has a right to ask for that. She made it very clear to us that we should be advocating for that. So just for a point of information, Mr. Zoglo has also been speaking with us. I had lunch with her today to discuss this issue. So okay. um, everybody's working together to address certain pieces. And certainly okay. there was a, again, that's the state project, though. OK. okay. And the other thing, I sent you also my requests. Um, I think the right-hand turn lane going to one t up to the old center, um, I think you should be very uh, observant of that because in the morning they are already backed up to Osgood Street at 730 in the morning. So you're going to allow trucks now to go up towards that Osgood Street, Mass Ave Osgood Street intersection that's already backing up now to Mass Ave and Osgood Street because the amount of vehicles 
that would be going through that intersection. Now you're going to also allow 18 wheelers to do that with that right turn lane. I asked the state to Kristen, why are you putting that lane in? And she said the only reason was for trucks. Now, can you explain? And, and maybe this they is why they can't do that today, though. They, the, what they can't make the, the no. corner. No, those two no. corners, uh, the two. Hey, Miss Miss Laura, yeah. we, you. Okay. Your public, you actually could sit back down in the audience, <laughs> um, but the, no, we're no, trying to take turns, yeah, um, yeah. and so your okay. turn is up, Miss Laurel. Yes. So my concern is, um, you have a residential street, you have two PRDs, right past my driveway. I'm going to have 18 wheelers and residents of Cobblestone and Phillips Common that are now going to be facing trucks as they come around that corner. With right now in the plans that are at 75% approval with a yield sign. And you're going to be having a lane that is constantly coming up that street with the third lane that run those lights at 70 miles an hour. Is that safety? I mean, that's something you have to look at. On top of that, with that third lane, with the lane going right, and 18 wheelers, I don't understand why a Walmart truck or a market basket truck, or today it, I, I saw a huge dump truck that was twice the size being allowed to go into residential neighborhoods. For what reason other than cut through? Is that you safe? You saw one making the turn today? They no, they were coming way. down this way. So now which, you're going to allow. Way, sorry. Oh, down Mass Down Mass Ave. And they run those. They're coming from 495 to the old. Right. Car. And it's gotten so bad that at 125, these trucks are traveling so fast that they cannot stop at that light. And they're putting on their hands on the horn because they're going to hit someone. They can't stop at that red light. And the same thing coming down Mass Avenue. They cannot stop because of the speeds that they are, are traveling at this point. The other thing is, is with that third lane, you're going to have kids crossing five lanes of traffic, walking to school and walking back to school. Is that safety? I, I, I don't, to me, the, fir the first death is going to be, and one of the other issues is that when I'm looking at the plans, okay, and the plans have been approved by someone here. Uh, there, you, because that's just not, it's just not true. Excuse state, me, excuse yeah. me. Miss Seaweed, can, can really he respond? It's really important if we're going to produce some kind of successful outcome. Okay, so we why? We approve state plans. Well, did they present them to us? Yes, they've also met with you two folks privately. They met with and us so at 75%. I, I understand. They don't get approved here. This is a state project. It needs federal. Do they provide as a courtesy? What are your thoughts? Yes, and they've done that. Approval is a much, I don't want to set the wrong standard. They don't come to us and before they go out to bid say, Mr. Mailer, Mr. Those. Mailer, can you I stop? Just want, I just they are the board of selectmen, not you. Miss Seaweed, however, though, he's, he's, trying, and, and Mr. So he's trying to address a concern because, I mean, none of us in this board is blind. We've read many of the comments, some of them which are, in fact, false. I sat at meetings with you where, yes, the state has said things that turned out to be false as well. I understand there's a lot of misinformation out there. And if the town manager is trying to address a concern that's being brought up and being presented as fact to dispute that fact, I think we as a board would like to hear. I mean, frankly, I mean, I know that there's a small crowd in the room today, but I also know there are people watching at home, and there's a certain service there to addressing a <laughs> statement that's made. Um, we did not approve any plans. Yes. Then oh. why on the plans does it say um, on the on the corner of the church, town and state to do landscaping? How how can the state put on their plans town and state to do landscaping? Excuse we, me. We, we have no financial or active involvement as it relates to the construction, including the drainage they're doing. They're going before the Conservation Commission, but we're not controlling the drainage. Do they show us the drainage plan and we look at them? Yes. Have we provided feedback as you folks have? Have they listened to all that feedback to, uh, from us? No, not it, it's the same thing. I just want to be just really clear that as it relates to approval, it's maybe the word approval, and that might be I'm overreacting to approval, but it's the word approval as if there's a vote. 
That is not how it works with state projects. It didn't work that way in any number of state projects away from the, the town, some of which are smaller. When the, the state typically does to, with us what they do with you, they throw out a plan and they say, what are your thoughts? We give them some feedback. I explain the involvement about the right turn lane. In the end, the state has to decide if it wants that right turn lane. I've been very clear. If it's in a battle about someone's property and you don't think you can justify it, that's your call. And I will say it again tomorrow night. I just want to remove the expectation that somehow that the state, it's, it's I want to get into that deal around the zoning, right? Um, it's, there is not a vote that moves forward state projects from any a board of selectmen in any community, nor does it come from me. It's the state deciding how they're proceeding, and they hopefully take the input <coughs> and, and do meaningful things with the input. So, Mr. Manager, and, and right. just because, I mean, this is why we want tomorrow night's meeting, because I think it's important for the state to hear from the community. I mean, I had the opportunity to attend the library, and we've already seen movement when the state has heard from the community. And so, that's why, I mean, again, for this board, it's important for tomorrow night's meeting, for the community that's interested. Again, I've, I've had the opportunity to attend two meetings, um, the second of which included only three residents, two of whom are here right now. Um, so, Ms. Laura, Ms. Ms. Seaweed does have the floor. I, I think at this point, I mean, I, I'm eager for tomorrow night's meeting. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. I just want to do one of Go. Ms. No, you cannot. It is Ms. Seaweed that has the floor. Okay, I just want to emphasize then that what the state has told us is that the Board of Selectmen have to work for the citizens of the town. Absolutely. Bringing down violations of zoning on your properties to two homeowners. No 25 foot frontage on my 287 Chickering Road when it's a state highway and I should be getting 100 feet. No, no pushback from the town on that for your residents. What are we here for tonight? I am too well, that's, that's what the, the intent for tomorrow night is. I mean, I you, you, were here, you were here two weeks ago, and we asked the town manager to arrange a meeting with the state so we could address the concerns. That meeting is happening tomorrow night, and that's what the intent was, right, is to address those concerns with the state, hear what they have to say, and make sure that we are covering Can I ask one order. question? Why weren't any of you at the April meeting when the plans were at 75%? The April meeting. April 2017, myself and three abutters were at the meeting at Stevens Library. I called Phil, said you should be at this meeting. Not one of you was at that meeting other than well, Phil coming later. Ms. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to be clear, because I want to I want to be, I think that I, I can only speak for myself, but I think that there are many projects that happen in the community. We try to be at as many of them as possible. In fairness, one of the meetings I wasn't able to attend you messaged me, literally at my home, I threw on my shoes, I put down my child, I said bye to my wife, ran to the library. I mean, we try to be as responsive as possible, but that doesn't mean just whether we're there or not that we have veto power. And again, we're having a meeting tomorrow night. I understand that, Phil. Miss okay. I understand that, Phil. No, but, but I also understand that as the state told us by two state officials, three, the plans were given to the town the town should have communicated these plans to the people before, as they were being done before the 75%. We saw those plans when we got to the library. We made comments. No one from the town contacted us and said, what are you, what are you guys talking about? No one. The next time we heard about the project when, is when Orc sent us a non-certified letter saying, this is how much frontage we're taking. So I'm just saying, as a board, okay, we are residents of your town, we pay taxes. I pay taxes on two. I should not be hearing that my property is being taken and everything I've said to them in April was never even talked about or we, they never got back to us, but yet, they told us the town was informed of what their changes were going to be. And these are abutters to our pro these are abutters to this major project of safety. So you're not only doing a disservice to us as two of the major abutters, but to all the citizens of the town that go through that intersection and have their children going up and down that street. That's I, I, all I have to and, say. And you are absolutely 
correct about us having to be attentive to the community. I don't think it's lost on you that three of the people up here, houses appear on your map that you presented. So, um, in fact, it was me walking by your house one day that you stopped me in your driveway, correct? Yeah, because so, I am very adamant about and that, how it's been communicated. So, so I, I think that's why you know we're eager for tomorrow night's meeting. and. Um, I think that that's... It, was that the October it, meeting, Ms. Seabay? No, answer? October meeting, we were told, was closed. What April meeting were we speaking April 2017, there was a meeting. Phil came. I, where was, the, no, I went not. I didn't, I didn't go No, it was not. It was April 2017. You know the meet? Phil came. It wasn't October 12th? October 12th was the public meeting. I, was, the I live on Mass Ave, and I was invited there? to that meeting. No, I had it was October of 2016. It was at 25% yes. design drawings. That no, it was, was posted not. on. The, it was posted on. You the, weren't there. I wasn't. No, actually, it's the October meeting. That you know, you were not at the October meeting because I have the list of the right. But that's fine. But Kristen actually told us the dates the other day. The October meeting was closed with the board of selectmen and the town. The April well, meeting. There was no way to close the board. I have no idea what this is. I was not on the no, board of selectmen. We don't have time. closed meetings. And I was invited so we don't have to any that closed meetings. And how did we as know a, about a public a, meeting? You, it was posted. There's on. It was on October 25th. Right. The meeting. That's or at least that's the date you messaged me and said at the meeting you are not here. Okay. It was on October. But there was a meeting so prior to that. No, there was no. That's. There was. There was okay. an October. I just want to. There was. There was an October. We were notified nearly two years ago. This, uh, I, I know we're going to digress a little bit, but I think it's important in the conversation. And this whole conversation, our conversation, this whole effort by the state began in 2009 when that when that intersection was identified as one of the worst intersections in the entire county and one of the 20th worst in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's what started the conversation. The state doesn't move particularly quick. That began in 2009 as a conversation, led to a roadway safety audit. Again, I'm, I'm catching up to this too. This is, I wasn't even here in 2009. And as a function that probably two years ago indicated that they would be looking at changes to that intersection. That led to, several months later, uh, a 25% drawing meeting, which was advertised through our website to nearly 4,000 people and posted on a public agenda um, that there was going to be this hearing, or information session, public information session. That was on October 25th. It hit the town's website on October 12th, and we communicated in the traditional ways we communicated. It was not meant in any clandestine fashion, and as a function of that, there was a number of residents who showed up, I know you showed up, and that they, they in fact, had a court stenographer there and recorded nearly 100 pages of comments. Mm -hmm. I, I just, let me, if I, if I can, Ms. just because it's important no. to the public conversation. That as a function of that meeting, there was input. I know that Ms. Seagway had a lot of input, and I appreciate that. And there were eight-ish residents and probably a number of series of officials. Most of these folks are design consultants. They're not actually MassDOT employees, but there was one or two MassDOT employees and a number of design consultants. That was at 25% drawings, not 75% drawings. Subsequent to that meeting, as a follow-up to that meeting, I met with the state officials, and the specific topic was intended to be drainage. Because of the $6 million being spent, the state's connection to the town's drainage is significant. Um, lack of drainage connections in the area is significant. And as part of the $6 million, the state plans probably in more than a million dollars in drainage improvements. Um, neither here nor there, and I know you're impacted with that. But that's where Do the you know Mr. Miller, so a the function of that okay. conversation, a conversation which included the assistant superintendent of schools to make sure that we went to the meeting if there was a school related issue it could be addressed. The town engineering staff, the DPW director at the time, and myself. The t discussion was supposed to be about drainage. I said, do you need, you know, drainage is drainage, whatever. They presented plans. At that meeting, they indicated um, that they, this is where the right turn lane came up. They indicated that they were going to proceed without the version that had the right turn lane. What did we think? They gave me some information. They said, we think it would be better from an engineering perspective. I said, I think you should re-explore that. So that is certainly on me to do. What they've subsequently said, and I just communicated that tonight, is they've indicated after that further review that without the third lane is a 30% increase in traffic accidents. And I've said to them, that is on you to decide if you want to proceed. The final item that came up in that conversation was very clearly the town's interest to expand sidewalks wherever possible for rules <laughs> of travel. And that included the state at part of 25% drawings to add brand new sidewalks from the back side of the Kittredge School all the way to the 99, from the corner of Mass Ave going down to the Atkinson entrance, and replace every existing other sidewalk that's in disrepair. That's part of this project. And so the town re-emphasized that we, in fact, asked them, expand them some more if you can. Um, 
they weren't quite frankly that amenable to that either and they don't always listen to us they made one small, small extension so that you'd be able to actually get into the backside of the Kittred school at the completion yeah. of the project that was the last sort of group meeting short of the meeting you had you guys then got notice months 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 later at 75 percent on the property takings that precipitated your meeting with MassDOT officials Mr. DeCollegero with the staff that led to your uh, meeting the last session and now we're going to go into another public information session but I'm not aware of any April meeting by okay. my staff or anybody else. I just want to let you know that um, as far as the drainage the drainage that's being put the ditch on my property has doesn't even help the drainage across the street so looking at plans are we really looking at plans is the town looking at those plans and seeing what they're doing to people yes, because because that's a public process as well the drainage plan has been submitted to the Conservation Commission which has the jurisdiction over the drainage plan it's been submitted to them so yes there's a public process associated with that I believe you attended the conservation meeting did you attend Sir, I know there was some uh, thought both. multiple so the Conservation Commission is responsible for the drainage plan it, you know, did you know? Did you know that there is no drainage on the 99's property? Every ounce of storm water that gets on that lot rolls into the public, into the street. It's because at the time, probably 50, 80, 90 years ago, unlike today, there was no retention basins put on the property. So all of that drainage ends up somewhere. And that is the case, quite frankly, throughout the neighborhood. Adams, Autran, Mass Ave, Chickering. And so the state, as part of this process, is putting in more than a million dollars worth of drainage. And there is a public process for that. It's the Conservation Commission. So I, I just don't want to leave the impression this has been done in a vacuum or the town is sitting in a back office approving things without, you know, without any acknowledgement of the impact on folks, because I think we are. Your last meeting led, quite frankly, to one of the people who were here. Having the state right away, people decide that they were going to um, work with that owner and take their property. So there is a public process. It still has value. We're still listening. There are certain things that we control and certain things we don't. But I, I don't want to leave the impression that we're not listening or this is being done in a vacuum. I think that would just be unfair. So, so that being said, um, we are having the meeting tomorrow night, and we will then have you folks um, back at our next meeting. And ideally, I mean, based on our last conversation, we would hope to get Mr. Manager MassDOT at that meeting as yes. well to talk about Absolutely. the resolutions. Because actually, you, the biggest point made tonight was the last meeting resulted in a substantial change in somebody's property in a good way. Um, and so with that, um, Ms. Seawade, I would assume Ms. Seawade is up at the, at the microphone. Are you well, any for, uh, Ms. You did, well, excuse me, yeah, excuse me. And okay. at the last meeting, and I want to be very clear, at the one hour and 14 minute mark, through the one hour and 16 minute mark, it was repeatedly said that this was the process we'd follow. There was no, that anybody who watched that public meeting, anybody who was here, there was no ambiguity. It was very straightforward that we would have a state meeting and then have you folks back on our agenda with the state to discuss and ideally right. advocate for some of your changes. We all agree, and we didn't It's up to the Board of Selectmen. So with that being said, Ms. Ms. Seawade, if yes, there are any additional I'm, comments. I'm done. Or, I just okay. want to make sure that I'm clear on the three things that I'm, I'm looking and, for. And you will be there tomorrow night? Yes. Okay. The three things that I'm looking for is for the plans to be looked at for the drainage that is doing nothing for the drainage in the pro plan, mm -hmm. the right turn lane that's going to allow trucks to go into the old center that are now running two lanes around the rotary to get to either Salem or Johnson, and the third, the thir that third lane, because that is going to impact my life when those cars are running. The at third, wait, the third, the third, third you said the third lane, the yeah, 125 third lane? middle lane. lane. Yep. Mass Ave going Mass straight Ave through. Yeah. And I'd be more so than happy to have you all have a left turn lane is what's going to be new there. The right turn lane's not new. Well, right, right now it's a left turn. Well, it's going to be the right turn lane's going to be there, and yeah. you're going to have a left turn lane, and there's no third lane in between going straight. There's Correct. currently there's I mean, a left if and there a were, straight it left. It would be significantly reduced. Right, and I think you need to have proper, to I mean, there has to be proper. And working with the state that people who are on that left lane go left because people don't enforce yeah. that the, do you mean at the same lo I, at the, the same so so so, currently, so yes so currently. that's this is exactly what needs to be communicated directly to the state right. and again if the state says anything that's contradictory to what has been discussed tonight most if not all of us are going to be there to be able to refute that I mean that's what's important is that there's not been an opportunity where we've all been in the room together and clearly this is something that 
like you said, it's impacting both of your properties quite substantially. Also, um, too, and I that's think the but that current lane is either a left or a straight. That's the intent of that that lane. It's either left under or straight. Under the design, you mean? No, no, no under the design. Okay. Currently, it is yes. right straight. or straight. It's right, right or straight. straight. Right. It's currently right or straight. It's there right or straight. You can take a left. You can't no. take a left. So what happens, so what's been happening is you can take yes, you a can. left. No. You can take a left. You can take a left, but there's, there's a straight lane, <coughs> a, a, a straight lane going Mass Ave across mm -hmm. the intersection, and there's a right turn lane. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, currently, the, the accident data seems to imply that when, since when folks take a left, on, which is allowed, onto yes. Chickering, so, uh, when, but it's, there's no lane. So we're, so, uh, Mr. Manager, I just need right, to, so we're yeah, just yeah, trying to just, clarify I what Ms. Seaway's asking. Lane, Correct. So, definitely the intent right. of that. So, and, so yeah. when you take the Stop. left onto Chickering, some folks are going around the people going to take a left oh, on Chickering, well, yeah. and they're not paying attention to the right turn lane. And so it's yes. causing accidents because they go to go get a patient. In fairness, they go to go around the person taking the left, and they, they cause accidents there. And okay. also, people taking the left get impatient and decide, decide to go to straight, straight when there's somebody <laughs> yes. on their right-hand side Correct. who are also trying yeah. to get there. And that also yep. is, I mean, as I drive that as they do so as they do it day. Osgood, right? So, so to, clar is to clarify, right now, Miss Seaway to Miss Seaway you, the Miss C. Wade. You should have kept Messina. <laughs> um, but you had said the drainage on your property. Oh, he was very lucky. Um, 125, the third lane, and then the final one was the request about Mass Ave's third lane being reduced to two lanes. Uh, uh, am I mistaken? Mass Ave's current straight lane be made a left lane. Mass Ave's current right lane be made a straight lane and a right turn lane. Okay. Leave it two lanes. I'm, I'm sorry. That's, okay. that's I, I didn't get that. She just wants two yeah. lanes on both. She two lanes on both. Right. So, so the so current the throughway lane is now a left turn lane with a light. So the that current. people cannot, if they're in that lane, they're going to go left. And there's, no, there's nothing else they can do. And the current right turn lane, which people do whatever they want to there, stay either right or straight. Okay. So, and this will be what you add. You will be advocating for Let's these three see. points tomorrow night as well. Yes. Okay. Yep. And no Perfect. right turn rotary Absolutely. lane okay. for the okay. for the and truck. The left is with an arrow. arrow. Yes. The left with an arrow only left. This seems to make sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. It also makes sense for the kids not to be crossing that, five lanes. And and again, we're going to have you back at our January 8th meeting, assuming yes. you guys accept our invitation. Thank you, Phil. Um, <laughs> okay, she can have the floor. Okay. Um, well, I would like to say if there's any additional public comment um, before we recycle anything, I, my understanding is at least some folks are here this evening. Nope. No additional public comment. It does not have to be on this topic. Okay. Was there a final thought? Or we're all set. I would like to say thank you um, again for making sure that this happened. Um, and I'm eager for tomorrow. Busy night. So, no final thoughts? Okay, with that, um, we are moving on to the town manager's report. Can I move it to the, no, sorry. Can <laughs> 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 move it to the 8th? Ray will do it. <laughs> Ray will do it on the 8th. Oh, God. I, I promise to be quick. So, so um, the capital improvement plan, we talked a little bit at the five-year forecast. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 9, Section 5 of the Town Charter, I hereby submit to you a review and consideration of Town Manager's recommended capital plan, CIP for the General Fund, Town and Enterprise Funds for Fiscal 19 uh, through Fiscal 23. Uh, the, the evaluation of 19, Fiscal 19 uh, CIP requests remains consistent with the process we've held in prior years. We get requests from uh, various departments. We rank those requests. Uh, Mrs. Antilli, myself, and Lynn Savage work together to, to evaluate those requests and make a recommendation. In continuation, the town's common goal to continue to implement practices which will result in establishing a sustainable municipality and ensure the stewardship of the town's asset. The CIP requests funding, which helps maintain our infrastructure, increase our ability to efficiently deliver services while controlling debt services as a percentage of operating revenues. It is also a primary tenant of the CIP to compel division directors and department heads to think beyond the immediate term and focus on mid-range needs as well. The CIP requests funding for roadway and sidewalk improvements, facilities master plan, various rolling stock, replacement of both police and fire portable radios, uh, playground improvements, information technology enhancements, and annual building maintenance. Consist, uh, consistent annual capital investment in each of these categories will prevent the town from returning to the days of deferred maintenance and reactionary responses to proposed projects. 
The recommended CIP includes funding in fiscal 19 in the amount of $750,000 for pedestrian vehicle access improvements for the school recreation complex at Main Street and Chickering Road, which is uh, being coordinated with MassDOT as a function of the prior discussion we just had on the agenda. The construction of a new kindergarten center as a component of the early childhood center, as well as the planned development of the middle school athletic fields and recreational complex. Uh, all of this will require design and realignment of the access and egress points to the complex, along with parking reconfigurations. The kindergarten center is anticipated to open in 2018-2019. The development of athletic fields and recreational complex will be a multi-phase construction project over the two or three year period, likely funded through the CPC, and you should expect a request this year to the CPC for the first phase of that project. A majority of the contemplated enhan enhancements will be on the property itself, but there will be a need to vehicle access egress improvements on Chickering Road that will be coordinated with, reviewed by, and approved by MassDOT, and some of those preliminary meetings have already been held. The town will continue to remain focused on controlling debt services as a percentage of operating revenue, and historically our target has been no more than 5%. We've been able to honor that uh, for the five-year CIP that you have uh, with only slight deviations to that. In fiscal 19, the percentage of revenues to debt service is 4.82, excuse me, 4.7%, which is lower than 4.82 of last year. This is primarily due to the responsible inflation, reasonable inflationary increases in the costs associated with the facility master plan and the recommendation we build a larger standalone center. First time I put in print that it's our hope and expectation to build a standalone brand new senior center as opposed to the original request last year that we would be modifying the existing building. Again, more to follow without a lot of uh, details, right? We remain focused on controlling debt service costs and my recommended uh, future CIPs, the use of one-time revenue may be needed to make sure we stay at or below the 5%. This plan continues the practice of pay-as-you-go funding for capital project costing less than 50000 The recommended CIP assumes that all requests which comply with the criteria to be considered a capital project uh, but cost less than 50000 will be included in operating budgets of the respective requesting departments. So although we have a $25,000 um, threshold for capital projects, over the last five years or so, we've indicated that we will pay out of the operating budgets for any projects between 25 and 50,000 to help maintain debt service costs in the long term. The targeted debt service uh, to revenues percentage for the past few years for water and sewer enterprise fund funds have been between 25 and 28 percent. Consciously incurring less debt during the past few years has also resulted in increased retained earnings within those funds, which in turn are used to increase pay as you go capital spending. Uh, in these funds. And in essence, our plan under the uh, enterprise funds starting approximately six years ago was to uh, improve the systems through capital investments, but not overspend if we felt like the, need, if the, the investment wasn't necessary. The long term, this has meant that we, uh, six years ago, had 45 percent or 45 cents of every dollar spent um, on our enterprise funds who are funding capital improvements, 45 cents of every dollar. Today, by driving that down to numbers that are more reasonable, between 21 and 25 percent, we're developing more retained earnings. We've left the water and sewer rates unchanged for six years, and we're using that increased savings to, in turn, invest in the system on a pay-as-you-go basis rather than incurring future debt, um, a really successful approach going forward. This CIP includes informa uh, information on the sources and uses of funds for these projects, such as state-funded Chapter 90 dollars for roadway improvements, which due to about $800,000, the use of capital stabilization fund we created several years ago, and the use of retained earnings for various uh, enterprise fund projects. In fiscal 19, the CIP includes $1 million from free cash or retained earnings. Town's ability to use general fund retained earnings in this way is a reflection of our progress in building reserves during the past few years. It is our goal when free cash gets to levels which we feel are manageable or appropriate, we'd use any dollars above that to pay us for uh, pay-as-you-go type projects as we did last year with, with the kindergarten in the tune of $4 million. The recommended CIP for 19 through 23 calls for total funding during the five-year period of $36,592,470 uh, with $29,657,000 of this total dedicated to general fund projects and $4,550,000 for projects in the water enterprise fund, $1,990,000 for enterprise fund projects of the sewer fund, and $395,000 for the Stevens Estate projects. 
Of this amount, 11,525,000 will be funded from outside sources, with the remaining 25,067,000 being bonded for periods ranging from five to 20 years. For fiscal 19, general fund projects have totaled a cost of 8,986,000. Uh, the water enterprise fund request for 19 total 875,000, all of which will be funded by retained earnings. And the sewer enterprise fund recommendation is $100,000, which will also be funded by retained earnings per the town's financial reserve policy. Funding for the approved facility master plan continues through 19. Uh, with the opening of the Public Works Administration Building next month, the town has now completed five of the seven uh, phases of the plan. The Fiscal 9 appropriation request includes funding for the construction of a new standalone senior center and the recommendation for the school department to reprogram funding for the Atkinson roof to the kindergarten project. We expect the kindergarten to open in September of 2018. During the CIP five-year period, the town will also plan for a facilities master plan two and fund the first two projects identified in that plan. The town's continued commitment for street and sidewalk improvements and repairs is reflected with an investment of $6,505,000 in the CIP. Capital Stabilization Fund, established several years ago, will allow for the addition of a carport and storage building for the police department in fiscal 2020. In addition to the modification of the facility master plan in 19, the most notable changes to the CIP from last year when compared to the previous five-year plan is the funding of $750,000 for pedestrian vehicle access improvements to the school recreation complex at Main Street in Chickering. This five-year capital plan is at the heart of our commitment to be stewards of the community. We're fortunate to serve. Our goal during this past, uh, year, past years have been to adopt and follow a thoughtful plan for ensuring progress and stability. Uh, the goal was has also uh, predicated on managing the financial impact of the infrastructure investments so as to not adversely impact service levels. The fiscal 19 through fiscal 23 CIP continues to embrace that goal and is respectful of its financial impact. I'd like to thank Finance Director Lynn Savage and Assistant Town Manager Ace and Tilly for their instrumental assistance in developing the CIP. Both Lynn and I are available to respond, or Ray and I are available to respond to any questions you may have about the program. Sorry for the long read at the late hour. So in large part, we've been disciplined about making sure that departments, when they think about a five-year outlook, they come back from year to year and try not to vary too dramatically from that five-year outlook. The departments do a fantastic job in that. There are times that thing ar things arise that are out of our control. This year, we're actually consciously making a decision to increase the funding for the senior center to, to approach the idea of building a standalone state-of-the-art senior center mm -hmm. that reflects uh, the needs of our seniors, quite frankly. That's a deviation from last year, mm -hmm. as the kindergarten was from the before, but I think when we have those opportunities, we should take advantage of those opportunities. <coughs> Other than that, um, we're looking at that first phase of that major middle school reconstruction project, which we're all excited about, and the 750000 investment this year starts us to think about the parking and traffic flow on that space, which is going to be a dramatic part of that. And not all of that project uh, will be funded simply by the CPC through the open space piece. There are aspects that we're responsible for because they may uh, affect the traffic flow, for instance, of the Atkins School, or the ECC, the kindergarten, or the middle school. And so this investment this year starts us to look at how traffic, which is a little bit of the Wild West right now, travels around that space in a way that makes more sense in the long term. So other than finding it in the attachment to our agenda, if people from the public wanted to go and access this capital improvement plan, what's the direction on our website to get them to it? Yep, we'll uh, post it directly on, it's usually under the budgets tab. I'll, I'll tweet that out tomorrow so people know how to directly, know directly how to find it, but it's typically within the finance school. So 19, you'll have the budget policy statements already been posted. The calendar has already been posted. Mm -hmm. Forecast has been posted. We'll post that to this as well. And then the finance committee will get it tomorrow and they'll begin the deliberations tomorrow. Okay. Um, I know we've discussed this one on one, but just for the public, uh, the line item around library parking expansion, that's yes. to look into assessing what could be done there, right? Or, or does that money also include any actual work? Yeah, we have to do a little bit of both. So that there was some, there was a request for uh, a couple of different proposals around changing the parking around the library to expand parking some of which seemed to, uh, were consistent with a plan that was actually done nearly a decade ago with the help of Merrimack College and their engineering staff, and some of it was new to the conversation. Um, we're looking for both an ability to start to 
make some of those changes, but also reevaluate some of the proposals that came in uh, from the library because they, they take a little more consideration there. One of the proposals talked about taking a fair amount of the green space that sits between um, Main Street and is that Green Street to the extension? Mm -hmm. And uh, that didn't resonate well, quite frankly, this idea of turning uh, green space into sort of asphalt space. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem to return the number of uh, additional parking spaces to want to support that right. kind of idea. And so from our perspective internally, as we evaluated this, we said, you know, we understand the parking constraint, but we're also a community that wants to look at this building and appreciate the building. And that's the grand entrance of the building. We spent a lot of money on the doors, right? right? <laughs> exactly. and so the idea of block topping that, as they would say, right, asphalting, yeah. um, didn't resonate well here, but we thought there was some initial steps in terms of changing the parking arrangements of the sort of angled parking near the, the opposite side of the building I made some agree. short that's, three cents. That, so, yeah. I know that, absolutely agree. That, that's, obviously I see that building all the time and I thought, okay, if we need to find some, some more space, we should do what we did on one side to the yeah. other side, probably yeah. not as far as can. I know there was some disagreement with some public safety for, when that was initially discussed because of getting out onto Main Street, but Green Street right now is almost as busy as Main Street yeah. and it's it has to do with probably the angle. So you felt that way as well. Is that what you're just saying now? I was saying I think we should angle in on the middle sex part instead of being parallel to the street. But I do not want to see asphalt in that in the parking yeah. space. No. Nobody the does. I'm well, it was, it was supported. I, I just don't think we need enough parking to warrant the yeah. negative effect of it. Right. Uh, the entire plan, including that parking, was supported by the trustees. But from our perspective, we just didn't feel like it was consistent mm -hmm. with the look of the building. I think, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think there was even concern with some of the trustees as to look. The look. I know the neighbors weren't happy. Yep. I'll tell you that yep. right now. I mean, it's one of those buildings that are there are occasions when there are larger events, quite frankly. It's a, it's a pretty good neighborhood that if you need to park there, yeah, on they a one-off basis, in front of my house, and I'm like, like great, yep. something yep. wonderful is going on at the library. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the plan, park at Rosemary Hall. Right. <laughs> Use my driveway. It's extra. <laughs> She will she will greet you with a bark, yes, but she won't hurt you. <laughs> well, Mr. Smitty will be okay with that. <laughs> and does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that being said, so tonight you've pre presented the CIP to us, but we are not voting to approve it. We're simply voting to forward it to the Finance Committee. I typically you vote to approve it, but give yourself the option of 30 days to make any amendments so that the Finance Committee can realize that it's supported in principle. You move yes. it forward and then you give yourself 30 days if you need to make any recommended changes to okay. that. So that's the typical process. You vote to support it and forward it to the Finance Committee with the caveat that you reserve the right for the next 30 days to recommend any changes. Great. I mean, I love the idea of the master plan too coming out. I think the master plan that we had was amazing. So facilities master plan, it really was a, a, a road map and I think it was a, you know, it was really um, a model for other communities to follow. And, and I think from that plan, we've seen so many great improvements and I think facilities master plan too is just going to be another another home run on that. It was yeah, really, I mean, I think as a, as a selectman, people asking about how are we doing these projects? How, how can this all be done? To be able to point them to that document and say, look, here it is. We plan, we build, and it's all done, you know, w without any data exclusions, I think. So, you know, kudos on that and kudos on coming up with a second one to continuing to move us forward. Thank you. Thank you. So that being said, do I hear a motion? Oh, well, let's we'll do it all that. <laughs> uh, motion to approve the... Um, let me just get the right exact wording. <coughs> Motion to approve the, uh, where are we? Sorry. Page two. Probably more towards the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah we moved everything We around. jumped around, page, yeah. the middle of page we two. Around. We didn't move the motion. That's the problem. Oh, yeah, we, we, there you go. we really pushed I you out. There, I got it. Oh, you got it? Someone's got it? The Board of Selectmen accept right. the FY 2019 to 2023 capital improvement plan, reserving the right to make changes as additional information becomes available and to move forward the document to the Finance Committee for review. Motion made by Selectman Keene, seconded by Selectman Valancourt. Any further discussion? All my friends on the Finance Committee, over to you. I'm on this side of the table. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little quieter over here. You're, you're yeah. um, <laughs> so, a uh, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none. We'll be sending that document to the FinCom. Okay.
I did add a, an ask the manager question. I won't ask myself, but I'll, uh, the, the question was uh, asked by a resident about the status of the electrical aggregation that town meeting approved uh, some time ago. So we have, I think I've notified the board, we've received uh, approval from the state that we're, we're a community who can now aggregate our electricity for private residents to benefit those residents. But we've also heard from our consultant that the current market rates do not favor moving away from the basic supply of that mm -hmm. grid. And if that changes, it basically happens twice a year in which you evaluate that. If that changes, then I'd come back to you and say, it looks like there would be a benefit of procuring electricity for all of our residents and what the benefit of that would be. But at this point, the basic rate of the end grid is better than what the uh, the, the non-utility, you know, traditional utilities are provided. And someone asked me that question, so I wanted to provide them the answer to that. Thank you. Any actual Ask the Manager questions from that our colleagues? Real action. That, was, that was real. Thank God for email. I mean, I have to say that's every every moment of every day is ask the manager. I think so. <laughs> yeah. at, at one, um, I'm sorry. Uh, is, um, we were on electricity. Anything further from our friends at National Grid and sort of dealing with the uh, reverberation of all the problems that we have. Uh, two things. One is that they were required to refire, file a report with the Department of Public Utilities, mm -hmm. uh, something that's a little uncommon. They filed a report. I think the report in large part felt um, indicated from their perspective that they responded in a way consistent with the nature of the outage and, and how it was returned within the period you would expect given the, the breadth of the outage. I don't think he went into detail about the kinds of infrastructure issues that I think drove mm -hmm. the conversation. Uh, I have communicated, I think, to this board and to, to my peers in the region that I'd love to hold a public, um, not a hearing, sometimes that word has the wrong connotations, right? Um, some kind of public dialogue with the neighboring communities to talk about uh, ways that we can improve that, invite National Grid to that discussion, invite some state officials to that discussion, to make sure we understand the long-term plans to improve the infrastructure. Ultimately, it was an infrastructure problem. It wasn't an immediate, you know, the lines down in front of my house. There were some uh, big circuits out and those circuits were not necessarily uh, out because of one tree. They were out because the system is aging. Right. And um, I think we all, you know, any level of reading can see the financial constraints that are on utilities, quite frankly. But in the end, uh, we have to prepare for our residents. And the best way to prepare is to understand what, what the utility is expecting in terms of the infrastructure. And if there's not a long-term plan to replace the infrastructure, we should quite frankly expect more power outages and, and, and communicate that to our residents so they're aware of it. Well, and I think that was the problem. In reading that report, it sort of said, you know, every, you know, all fell within norms except North Andover, and, mm -hmm. you know, was at the far end. And so we were sort of minimized, I think, in kind of the overall perspective. So I, I'd yeah. appreciate that a little more, yeah. you know, attention that, you know, because sure. the average is good. Does, there are people that. <laughs> the averages don't always work, right? right? It depends on what statistical measure you want to use. Uh, I can tell you that um, uh, National Grid has reached out. They heard me communicate that I had some interest in that, wanted to know if I was going to proceed with it, seemed positive to want to participate. Uh, one of our neighboring communities have also asked me, did I plan on sort of sponsoring, hosting, or doing something like that, because they have an interest in participating as well. Uh, piggybacking that to GLSD, uh, the GLSD has had a couple of robust conversations about um, their reaction to all of this. They're taking some steps um, for short and long-term sort of ways to address it and have also indicated um, that they're going to get into some public, to offer residents what we do today in terms of the ability to get public communication or notices. I did attempt to get online right after I read that, and then I couldn't find that link to get that, that uh, notification. Notices. But as soon as it becomes available, I'll communicate it to the board so you would get these kinds of notices that, that we receive, almost mm -hmm. like their version of a robocall. So any time there was an outage or a spill, you'd get you know the text, email type message. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's at least a step in the right direction. So the board, the GLSD board, did hear those concerns at least expressed by this board. I mean, we had directed our representative yes. to go and bring that, that issue yes. specifically to their attention, that they yep. should try to communicate more. And so they were receptive of that? Yes, both uh, myself and Andrew Flanagan from Andover attended one of those two meetings, expressed mm -hmm. very clearly our thoughts about those things we thought they didn't do so well and those things that we thought they should be looking at moving forward. The board was very receptive to that. They had a second meeting. I did not attend that meeting, but our representative was there, and the conversation continues. So they're looking at making sure it doesn't happen again, that's more of an infrastructure issue, and that um, they're also looking at better ways to communicate. Great. Thank you. Um, any 
additional questions? I think that about wraps up the meeting. I just comment. Um, so on, I guess we'd all like to give our best wishes to a, a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, the end of a happy Hanukkah, and a happy new year. Um, I especially this evening want to welcome home our service people who are coming home for Christmas because I have one who hasn't been home for two years, so it's great to have Ryan home for Christmas. But it made me think of all the families where their, their loved ones are coming in for the holidays. So welcome home and welcome home to all our college kids and everybody else. So have a wonderful Christmas. So, and he's going to say, Mom. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he, was, he wasn't far from Atlanta. That being said, motion, to adjourn. motion made by Selectman Keene to adjourn the meeting. Seconded. Seconded by Selectman Nobly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No.